All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, today we have a, a very important topic, and we will discuss together what the Muslims claim about their religion. Islam is the way of life. Islam is a perfect religion. Islam is the best. All those things. Yesterday I saw a woman in the news who, uh, she is an Irish. She converted to Islam, and she changed her name. But this woman, she changed her name many times before. According to the news, they say she was, she converted to be Hindu. And then she became a Catholic. And then she became a Muslim. And each time she converted, she changed her name. Hmm. I wonder what my name would be tomorrow. Az-Zarqawi. I know. Osama bin Laden. <laughs> you know, in the West, People are suffering from a lot of mental issues, and this is true. But this is not only in the West. I mean, in the Middle East, we live the mental issues. But in the West, I find that because there is many, many people, they have a lot of empty, empty purpose in life, you know. So you will see people, they are doing yoga, dressing weird. I mean, I see Western people wearing clothes have nothing to do with them, you know, like sometimes... They are wearing Asian clothes or this pajama. I don't know what, what who is the word who who is the one who made this uh, pant they wear, like especially women. Suddenly, um, a Western woman she is uh, wearing uh, clothes look like a Hindu or, I mean, I don't know what to say. I hope my microphone is good, guys. Do you have a bad noise or something? Is the microphone good? Let me know, please, if the microphone has a problem. So, oh, by the way, I'm not putting Western down. I'm just stating facts. For sure, not all Western do that, and not, you know. But there is a there is a good number of Western people. They are suffering from those issues. And I always tried. Let me see this microphone. I hear, I hear some buzz. Okay, now it's better. Um, I want to do yoga. Now, for sure, some of you from India, they will say yoga is wonderful, etc. I don't believe in such a thing because, you know, the, the yoga, the yoga, first of all, is about you practicing to be the center of the earth. And this is the problem of the earth, that you try to be the center and that will make you selfish. To be the center of everything is to believe that you are God and the rest around you are like nothing. Instead of sitting in your ass, excuse, excuse my language, meditating for God, which is not exist in your belief because you do not know what the God is, go and do some good work, help the poor, help someone, you know, an old man, he cannot afford to pay his bill. I mean, do something, sitting in your bum, and supposedly you are meditating, and I don't know, after sitting for 10 hours, what will come out of you. At least chickens, when they said they said to me lay, to lay eggs and they make babies, you said they are to do what? I mean, after 10 hours, what exactly you accomplish? Nothing. So this is this is one of the confusion in the world. They believe in such a thing, and they like you Western, they like foreign issues, foreign, uh, let us say, foreign religions is attractive for them. And Islam is attractive for many people in the West. Why? Because simply, first of all, they did not know what Islam is about, or what they knew, that Muslim they submit supposedly to one God, which is even the word submit is not exist in Islam, because Islam is not a word means submit, it is surrender. And you don't surrender to Allah, you surrender to Muhammad. Muhammad is just, you know, uh, like he used Allah just to be the, the, the one in the authority. You never submit to any god in Islam. You submit or you surrender to Muhammad to be his slave. And the proof is very simple. The Muslim, when they pray to Islam, in Islam, uh, everything they do is what Muhammad said, not what Allah said. If you go in the Quran, you will never find one place that says pray five times. Muhammad says five times, you do it five times. Quran says three times. Muslim don't do, do three times. Everything in Islam is abrogated by a hadith of Muhammad. Muhammad, he changed whatever he want. When he want, this is valid. One in this one, no, he, you know, he don't want. Muhammad, he makes chapters and verses about women giving their private part to him. 
So the topic today, why I'm insulting yoga? I'm not insulting yoga. How you can insult yoga? Is yoga is a person? I mean, this is very naive of you to say, my friend. To say insulting yoga is as if as if yoga is a guy. His name is Yoga or Mrs. Yoga. How you can insult yoga? Same time, I believe it's something stupid. You don't believe me? Don't don't agree. I believe this is the most stupid thing a human being he can do. It's just a waste of time. You see, your life is a countdown machine. So you sit like this, you close your eyes, and you are meditating supposedly. And what you do after four hours sitting in your bum? Nothing. What you accomplish? Nothing. People who practice yoga, they don't live, don't don't live longer. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a foolishness. You you are a copy paste of people who do do something as part of someone's religion, but you do not know why. You don't have to agree with me. I want you to go to practice yoga and tell me what you accomplish. You see, if we sit in our bum and we put our hands like this, for sure, when we finish, the earth will be better, the ocean will be cleaner, the river will be more fresh, and the sky will be more blue. Nothing changed. I mean, what you did in doing yoga. Imagine if the whole earth do yoga every day. I'm just stating my opinion about things Western they do. They don't even know what they do. The best the best way to understand how foolish some Western are is to watch a movie. It's called The Love Guru. Anyone watch it? Anyone watch The Love Guru? Go watch it and see how silly. I'm not talking about, by the way, I'm not talking about the Hindus. I'm talking about the Western who do things. They don't even know what those are about. Copy, paste, and they think that will make them cool. Actually, the most aggressive people I saw is those who they are from the West who practice those things. All the supporters of Hillary Clinton, they are yoga people. You know, they have the hippie mind, the hippie mentality. Everything is okay. Everything open-minded. We have sex with anybody, etc. Blah, 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 blah. You know, but the second you say something you don't like, they will not mind to beat you up. But they do yoga so what I'm saying that the yoga doesn't fit for those people and they don't belong to it maybe for the Indian have a different value and they live it in different way they understand it differently but Western when they do things they do it in the wrong way as usual same way as about Islam Western they have no idea what Islam is about this religion came to them and then start saying, as long as the Christian they say Islam is evil, then those Western, this group of Western, they will think Islam is a good religion because Islam, those people they take the side of anyone opposed to Christianity. As simple as that. So in the front of us, we will see here. This is a website. It's a debate website. Debate.org. Is Islam a beauty way of life? See, the topic is not about yoga, but I just started to show you that, you know, Western, generally speaking, they have no idea what they are talking about. And today we will have some idea about how the debate work. Islam is religion, as a, a religion, is a beautiful way of life. All religions are considered a way of life, including Islam. Muslims believe, the believers of Islam, live a beautiful way of life because they believe action are judged based on intentions ah so in islam in islam my friend they have a beautiful way of life because action is just by the intention you do mm -hmm. i will give an example i will give you an example <clears throat> when a Muslim he say I want to take you as a friend which is a crime in Islam to take non-Muslims as a friend 
Islam does not judge the Muslim if he take you as a friend unless he mean it Islam is a way of life it's very beautiful religion my friend so if you are a person who your intention to take someone as a friend and he is not a Muslim then the Muslims have the right to kill you and this is not my interpretation this is the Muslim interpretation for the Quran chapter 3 verse number 28 and this is the Islamic website of the King of Jordan the friend of USA and the friend of Israel supposedly whoever believe that there's a Muslim he take you as a friend you must be stupid or ignorant in the best scenario because as you see the words in the front of you explaining the Quran by Ibn Abbas the cousin of Muhammad himself so in that statement there they said the way Islam is a beautiful way of life the reason because Islam judge you by your intention so if you do something you don't mean to do Islam don't judge you by something you did not mean to do and here a Muslim is not allowed to take you as a friend and if he take you as a friend read with me carefully he says and we read, we read this many, many times before the believers let not the believers take the disbelievers as a friend the disbelievers is you me Jews Christians Hindu Buddhas etc all right as for become might mighty and honorable in preference to the believers so a Muslim is not allowed to take you as friend and give you you know honor or honor you who but the one who are sincere sincere in what sincere in taking you as a friend who does that seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrites and disbelievers as a friend he has no connection with Allah see Islam is a beautiful way of religion or a beautiful way of life because Islam judge you by your intention perfectly so now we establish a very peaceful society beautiful society that my neighbor who is a Muslim is not allowed to take me as a friend just because I'm a Christian do you see how beautiful Islam is I mean this is beyond the beauty Do you see how they try to fool you? Islam judge you by your intention. This is true, but the fact it's ugly because the intention of Islam is to hate your neighbor, is to hate anyone is not a Muslim. So they gave you a golden rule in Islam, and it is true in Islam, they judge you only by your intention. But the intention of Islam is the question what Islam is about? Is Islam about loving people who they are not Muslims? Or Islam divide people and make them hate each other why if a Muslim he take me as a friend look what will happen to him I don't know if you can see with me what will happen to someone he take you as a friend he's a Muslim it says he has no honor mercy or protection from Allah which means the Muslims they will kill him he is an apostate he has no connection with Allah which means he is an apostate and due to that he has no honor which means Muslims can rape his wife mercy or protection from Allah which means he have no protection from Muslims so the Muslim they can stone you they can cut your head etc uh, Jad Makhul don't you see me my friend that's I am making uh, I saw you I saw you thank you my friend thank you for saying hello in Arabic Uh, anyway so when they say to you intention we need to, to know what Islam intention is about as an example as an example when somebody says to me the intention is what we judge you with, with it sound good however we have to examine the intention of this religion when a Muhammad he attacked the neighbors and he say to his followers let us attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls what is the intention any Muslim can tell me what was the intention of Muhammad 
obviously the intention of Muhammad is to rape blondie women as simple as that <clears throat> let's see Muhammad he said and I'm showing you Islamic interpretation this is not my own statement this is not me saying that this is Islamic interpretation this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia the well-known Saudi Arabia government which is very peaceful and it's presenting to us the way of life it's a very beautiful way of life if you go to their embassy they will cut your pieces and they will make you shish kebab and they will dump you in the sewage because Islam is peace and those people they are practicing Islam Saudi Arabia is very safe a place because Islam is practiced in full now here in the front of us this is the Quran chapter 9 verse number 49 all right it says here that a Muslim was sitting listening to Muhammad when Muhammad he said tabuk banat al -asfar wa nisa al -rum. attack Tabuk the city of Tabuk you will gain the daughters of the yellow the Arab they you they call because they are blonde they call them the people of the yellow and the women of the Roman a man his name is Ajad he answered he said excuse me don't seduce me by women so Muhammad he make a chapter about this guy or a verse calling him hypocrite the man is a hypocrite because he said don't seduce me by women who they are Roman you see the intention the intention of Muhammad is to spread Islam or to rape the women who they are blondie. The Muslims they lie to us and they say that we defend ourselves and everybody have the right to do so. We don't attack the neighbors and we don't start war. Well, here we go. Why Muhammad he decided to attack the Roman? It's in the front of you. This is the book of at tabari hadith number 16785 and we can find the same reference by the way in many books not only at tabari if you don't like at tabari muhammad attacking the roman not because he wants to spread islam he is telling us the intention the intention is to attack the neighbors who they are the roman and get the blonde girls so islam will not judge you by attacking Attacking and killing because to in order to get the blonde girls how many people they have to die Before the Muslims who they are following Muhammad at that time get those blonde women and rape them how many men and How many houses and how many cities we have to burn down in order to get the blonde girls? But you see the intention of Muhammad is not to burn cities is not to kill the intention is to rape the women and that make him a good guy Do you understand my friend in the statement made here in this website they say Islam judge you by your intention okay what is the intention of Muhammad is the intention of Muhammad to kill the Roman no my friend he's a good guy the, his, his intention is to rape the Roman women not to kill the men but he had but because he cannot accomplish the mission to rape the Roman women the blondie girls to enslave them he have to kill the men so he's a good guy because Islam and this is what make Islam very very beautiful religion because it judge you by your intention all religions are considered way of life including Islam Muslims the believers of Islam live a beautiful way of life because they believe actions are judged based on intentions so Abdul 
what is the intention of Muhammad when he said attack the Roman and get the blonde girls I will give you options Muhammad he want to get the blonde girls because they were homeless and he want to give them cheese and better for free or B Muhammad he want to attack the neighbors to get the blonde girls because he want to teach him Arabic or C Muhammad he attack the neighbors and get the blonde girls because he want to make their hair black None of those options including rape for sure Muhammad he never attacked the Roman People so he will rape their women. No way. Are you kidding me? The intention of the Prophet is amazing and so beautiful So when he said attack the Roman and get the blonde girls, he don't mean raping them They just want to play with them like hide and seek Islam is the way beautiful way of life hmm. Why I don't make short video my friend I mean what's wrong with you guys if you want short videos go and go there as many people they make 15 minute videos because they do they will not give you time I give you 10 hours of my time and then you complain don't watch my videos if you like short videos there is many I'm not going to name for you they make 15 video 15 minute video because they will not they are not willing to give you time of their life more than 15 you don't deserve more than 15 minutes this is the issue so if you think you are looking for a video of 15 minutes I am not McDonald go to McDonald I am here to teach not to make a short video I mean, I don't know what's wrong with people. Short video. Okay, I'm done. Here we go. 15 minutes is gone. Should I go? For how long I'm here? We passed the 20 minute. Okay, bye bye. They are making 15 minutes for you because they don't care really for you. You don't deserve more than 15 minutes. Go and see all those who speak about Islam or against Islam. They give you 15 minute video and they go home, sleep, or watch TV. And then they say to you, make a donation for us. I stay with you for many, many hours, yet people are unhappy. Please be unhappy. Take a hike. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, Max CP. <laughs> anyway, guys, yeah, actually, you know, sometimes it's you feel like you, they are offending you by saying short videos. I mean, well, make my video, take any, take any part of my video, cut it short, and make it short, make it ten minute. Take any idea. I have long video. You can cut it pieces and make. Um, you know, we speak about many things. Now we go back, we go back to the topic. My Skype is open, by the way. If there is any Muslim is willing to call us, please feel free to prove to me that I'm wrong. Sal, you want to make coffee for me? I wish. I wish I have somebody here to help me. Sometime I would sometime I st because I stay for long just you want to go to the bathroom by the way We are we don't go to the bathroom mm -hmm. Yeah, do you know where the prophet used to piss? He pissed inside his room and then he dry his hands on the wall and I challenge any Muslim to say that it's not true I Can imagine the wall of Muhammad bedroom it's painted by the most priceless boobs. Dry your hands in the wall? A Muslim, a smart Muslim, I remember once he said to me, well, what do you want him to do? He is in the desert. What, 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 what desert? 
He is in his house, you idiot. Are you saying to me, Muhammad, he's carrying the wall with him wherever he go instead of carrying a towel? What desert? In the desert, there is no walls. He is home. Anyway, we judge you by your intention, remember. <laughs> uh, if we have any beautiful Muslim or handsome Muslim, please feel free to call me. Anyone knows why I'm saying a beautiful Muslim or handsome Muslim? Who knows why? Who knows why? Let us see who is a few is far, a fast thinking or a thinker based on what you learn from me. Why I say handsome Muslim and a beautiful Muslim? Because the only beautiful religion in the world who forbid women from taking hair from their face is Islam. What? And that will make the Muslim women handsome. The only religion ask the Muslim to shave their mustache is Islam. What? And that will make the Muslim men beautiful. I challenge any Muslim to tell me why in the world that the God of Islam will be so upset if a woman she take hair from her face. Brother, if I marry a beautiful, handsome Muslim woman, I woke up in the morning and I found I touch her cheek and her beard is so long. That is very sexy. That's impressive, my friend. Let us ask Zakir Naik. Actually, first of all, let us see the hadith. I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm lying. Maybe this guy is lying to you. I mean, how you know? Let us see the hadith. Uh, let us see. Allah, he got upset from many things. Allah is very, very easy to be offended, my friend. So you have to be careful. You can offend Allah so easy. The Prophet said, who is the one who said? The Prophet, he said, that the women who take hair from her face the one who block her eyebrows. Allah, he curse her. And that is very logical because Islam is a very beautiful way of life. God of Islam, he will be so much offended. Because a woman, she took some hair from her face. That is really disgusting of you women to do. Allah like to see you beautiful with a long beard. Why you want to take hair from your face? Hmm? Any Abdul want to tell us? You see how Allah, he curse. Anything you do, Allah is cursing you. Hello? Hello? Yes. Am I speaking with Christian Prince? Yes, it's me, my friend. You are live on uh, air. Hello, hello, my friend. Uh, I am from Russia. Oh. And uh, I, want to, uh, I want to thank you for all you're doing in uh, YouTube and all over the world. And um, I'll go further and... Uh, Let's make our world together in peace and in love. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the first time someone, no, actually not the first time. Uh, maybe you are the second person who called me uh, from Russia. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very grateful to have you, my friend. And uh, uh, actually, by the way, I have a lot, of, uh, a lot of love for Russian people. I know in the West, they try to present to you that Russia is a very evil country. The fact Russia is a wonderful country and they have a very great history defending the Christians, especially, especially in the Middle East. 
So I have a very special things for the Russian. While the West was sponsoring terrorists in the Middle East, the Russian, they were fighting them. And this is what happened in the last few years, actually, in Syria. And this is what happened when the Turkish attacked the Christians in the Middle East and in Armenia. The only one who stood to defend the Christians from all the Western countries, it was the only government, it was the Russia. So I am really grateful for the existence of such a country and such a people. They are wonderful and I love them. Thank you very much for calling me, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Yeah, maybe we need to study some history, you know, because the Russian, many of you do not know the war in Shishenia happened because the Russian, they stood to defend the Christians. So they bear a war. It's not their war, really, except that they have no choice but to defend the Christians who have been slaughtered by the Ottoman Empire and the whole world was watching. Same time, and history repeat itself. Obama, he donated more than $600 million to the terrorists in Syria to kill as many Christians and as many even none, even from the Muslims. They can. While Russia was attacking the terrorists, and they are the one actually who brought the terrorists in down in their knee, and now Syria is almost free from those terrorists except Hezbollah and that is a different story I hope Trump he will continue the job and he will clean Syria from Hezbollah very soon now we go back to our topic do we have any Abdul is willing to call us who is Abdul wanna call us and tell us why Allah he hate women who take hair from their face Hmm? Why Allah he hate a woman she work in her teeth? I mean, what is the problem of Allah? What if a woman she have a bad teeth? Is it really dangerous for Allah? Hmm? Let us see. Hello. Is this Christian Prince? Yes. How are you, Mister? I think um, your name is a Muslim, so I'm I'm guessing that you are a Muslim, right? <laughs> well, actually, funny story. Uh, I just saw your. I'm watching your live stream right now. This is my first time I've watched it live. Uh, I'm fantastic, but um, so I I guess what I'm saying is I'm not a Muslim anymore, but I used to be. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you for your videos because they've helped me so much when I go and talk to other Muslims because they can't respond to <laughs> your arguments, basically. I actually bought your book as well. Um, so I just wanted to say thanks. Well, I, you are welcome. I'm, I'm so happy for you that you left Islam. Uh, do you like to, to tell, us, tell us like how you left Islam and why you left Islam, if you don't mind? Oh, yeah, no worries. So um, you're familiar with uh, Sahil Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, son of Abu Dawood, yes? Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, uh, when I was growing up, uh, I would uh, study the Quran, but I figured out um, when I would read the hadiths, I would read like the thing about how Muhammad stabbed the dude with in the eye because um, he he took the camel, and I'd read uh, about the his marriage to Zainab, and I'd I'd read all these things, and then people would be calling him like a perfect man, and that's a complete lie. So I figured out after a while of just studying on my own, and then. I actually I became a Christian over a year ago. So, uh, yeah, and then the story of Jesus and the crucifixion, all that stuff. Like I could talk. I mean, you you're already familiar with all this stuff, but there's so much that I could say that would. Uh, well, I'm so happy I, for you, my friend, for for accepting Christ. Not only to leave the devil, but you join the right place and the right right person to follow. Uh, sure. What about the Quran? What do you think about the Quran, the book of the holy book of Islam, supposedly? Oh. Well, okay, so I I used to think that it was a flawless book um, because that's what I was taught by my moms from birth. So then when I started reading on my own, um, I would have questions like, for example, it says that uh, uh, 
Let me think. Oh, so it says that seam is formed between the backbone and the ribs, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would yeah, ask. Uh, yeah. So I asked my my father, and I was like, "Is that is that really what it says? Am I just reading the Arabic wrong?" And he he was like, "No, like he he wouldn't even give me an answer." So I'd ask the sheikh; they wouldn't give me a good answer. Um, and then there was the uh, the verse where he said, where Muhammad says that he can any woman that wants him that wants to to marry him can marry him hmm. uh, if they want. And I'm like, that seems awfully like self serving, like a lot of these revelations. Um, and oh, and then the other one where he wanted people to leave his house when they come over for dinner because he has to go and see all his 11 wives and all this other stuff. So, so yeah, um, as far as the book as a whole. Yeah, but you I'm know, sorry. I, I, I feel sorry for you now. You will not get the versions no more. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, what you would do uh, without the versions now? What you would do? I mean, you can <laughs> you, you sacrifice all those beautiful versions who they look the same. They have the same face, the same name, the same eyes, the same hair, the same height, the same yeah. age. And uh, I mean, no, I feel sorry for you. I think, my friend, you should convert back to Islam so you can get the versions. <laughs> uh you're a comedian. Well, that's I'm not I'm not really a comedian. It's a stupid religion. What I can do? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Hey, so so let me ask you this: Are you thinking about writing any more books on on this topic? Yeah, actually, I'm writing. You know, I'm writing uh, now. Actually, I'm working in two books at the same time. Yeah, but okay. you know, but the uh, the process is very slow uh, due to many reasons. You know. And always a devil he tried to stop you imagine Absolutely. I made I finished almost 90 pages in my book and then okay. suddenly I found that I have two files um, in my uh, in, in the computer so I deleted one of them for the same book because I don't want to be confused about which one to open so after yes. I finished those all those pages when I opened the other file I found that that for other file is empty <laughs> 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 and I empty my trash, and there I could not retrieve that file. So imagine, I have to go back all the way from zero. But anyway, I'm working in two books at the same time right now. Okay. And we will never stop, you know. But 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 right now we are we are making a book. If you if you go and uh, try to write down all what we said in the last even thirty minutes, you will see you can make maybe twenty pages of of, of words. So yeah, you go over a lot of material. Yeah. Well, the topic itself lead into from one thing to one thing to one thing to one thing. And mm -hmm. knowledge is speak. You know, when you are a person who have a lot of knowledge, then your knowledge will talk. It's not you who's talking, it's your knowledge. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy that people they are learning and they are enjoying the, the knowledge. Do you have mm -hmm. any any question, my friend? Anything you yes, want to say? Do. I do, yeah. So when you're when you're going out in, because I understand that, like from your books, I've been able to learn a lot of things as far as um, things I can say as far as like with the apologetics, though. But I'm talking about how can I like spread the gospel to them in a way that isn't like attacking, so that they might actually like come to Christ as well. How can I, how can I do that? You see, for me, I do it in different way from other Christians. Other Christians, um, they think. That the best way to to bring people to Christ is just to speak about Jesus. I don't do that because, especially when you speak to a Muslim, a Muslim he's a person he's been told everything wrong about Christianity. So already he been informed wrong information, and he believe in them. So you, you can you can read for him the Bible, and from now until next year, mostly he will not be affected because simply he been taught wrong, and he been taught lies about us. So sure. for me, in order to bring someone to, to Christianity, first I have to show him that what he learned about us is absolute lie. Mm. After that, and then, then we can talk, you know? But before that, it's a waste of time. Now, okay, you, so you, you want to address them first. In your case, you can learn from yourself because you, you yourself, you are, uh, you know, an ex-Muslim, right? So yes. you have a better chance to understand how a Muslim think so you can decide how to speak to the person but however for me when I speak to people I speak to every individual different way why because we are different there is someone right away he, he want to listen and he is sincere but there is someone he want to just argue and he is not sincere 
so you have to deal with each person in different method in different way the one who is sincere if you want to speak really about the Bible we will talk we will listen but most of them they don't want to be sincere they are calling mm -hmm. you to attack and not to listen even to the answer you want to give them this is why when a Muslim he tried to ask me a question about Christianity uh, right away you will notice that he is not listening even to what I said he have another question to give it to you before even you finish the first question because he don't want you to have a break from answering sure. so you will not ask him a question about his religion mm. if you see if you notice that all Muslims want to debate about one thing it is the Trinity yes always yeah but why you know why i mean they heard the answer of the christians thousands and thousands of times why you want to re repeat again and again and again because simply sure. this is the only topic it's safe and secure and they will say to you we believe in one god you believe in the trinity so that's it i mean i am i am now limited in what i will attack islam with supposedly according to them and they are safe in this debate somehow so they mm. choose always a certain point and actually debating about the Trinity is one of the stupid things ever because when the Muslim he debate about Trinity he himself he believe in the Trinity in Islam everything is based on the Trinity when a Muslim he started the prayer he said in the name of Allah Ar Rahman Ar Rahim mm -hmm. Allah have 99 names which is the multiply of the age of Jesus which is 33 x3 Yes. Divorce in Islam is final only if you do it three. Muhammad, when he say Assalamu alaikum, he have to say it three. Have you ever heard of some somebody entering a place? He said to you, Assalamu alaikum, and then you say to him, Wa alaikum salam, and then he say again, Assalamu alaikum, and you say okay, Wa <laughs> and then he say again, Assalamu alaikum, and you say alaikum. I mean, obviously, there's a mental issue here. Yes. Why you want to say Assalamu alaikum three times? So Islam is based on number three. Everything, everything in Islam is based on number three. When a Muslim yeah, he do evolution, he have to do you know uh, his his face three times, his nose three times, his hands, his I mean everything in Islam is a three time. Yeah, well, CP also like you're familiar with this. Uh, the Muhammad took a lot of parts of his religion from like paganism and from Jewish traditions and Christian traditions. So it's really like a combination of all those things. Um, but you're I totally agree with you on the the Trinity. Yeah, he is copying for sure uh, because you see Muhammad uh, uh, I don't know if you remember I'm before I spoke about uh, the fasting in Islam mm. Muhammad he never had fasting in his religion. So he was jealous the Jews have fasting The Christian have fasting he don't have fasting. So he said, okay, let's do fasting. So he start He arrived to the, the city of Yathrib and he saw Jews. They are fasting He said to them. What is this fasting? They said this is the fasting when Moses says he crossed the sea he said, okay, well, we are, we deserve Moses more than you. So he ordered his followers to fast because of the Jews. Have you ever oh. heard of a prophet of God? He is doing something. He just heard of it from someone. He is a Jew. Just because he told him we fast, didn't he receive an order from his God? And then the order explained to him why? And then we fast. Why, why, why he is fasting the fast for a Jew? Why he is fasting the fast of Musa, as they claim? What if they are lying to him that this has have nothing to do with Musa and have nothing to do with uh, 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 with anything have to do with the religion? Sure. He is just copying. You see here, if you read with me, in the beginning, Muhammad he was fasting what it's called the fasting of Ashura. Muhammad, he claimed that Ashura was taken from the Jews. But the fact, I believe, it's had nothing to do with the Jews. It was something the pagan they practiced, and there's many reference for that. So how Muhammad, he switched from Ashura to Ramadan. And where Allah, he told him to fast Ashura, and where we can find Ashura in the Quran? The answer is, and look, Muhammad, he confirmed that if you fast, Ashura, just fasting that is enough to repeal all your sin, to wipe out all your sin for the last before, which means this is more important than Ramadan. But now Muslims, they don't fast this, this fasting no more. What happened to the fasting will wipe off your sin? 
why it's not important no more one day you fast or three days you fast you are it, it's better than Ramadan for sure because as you see it's going to whip out your sin for the last year mm. so obviously at that time Muhammad was looking for things to add to his religion he want to make a religion he don't have fasting they have fasting the Jews have fasting the Christian they have fasting even the the pagan they have fasting he don't have fasting so let us copy so he started with Ashura then he met with the Sabi and the Sabian is the one who do fast Ramadan the Ramadan you see Ramadan Ramadan is is, is a month of the Arab exist before Islam which means the month of thirst I mean the Ramad all right but this yep. month was a practice by the Arab before as celebration for their pagan practice Muhammad he took the Sabian practice which is consistent with the moon movement what the Sabian believe that the moon uh, if, if you for sure you you know that the the fasting start with the moon right when the moon appear yep. okay and then yep. the, the fasting over when when the moon disappear Yep. So what the, what the Sabi and they do, they start the fasting in a town, and they end the fasting in different town because they believe that this is a new moon. You see, if you go in the Quran, if we go right now in in the Quran, uh, <clears throat> if we find the word shahr, do you know what the word shahr mean? Shahar 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 no I don't know Shahar Shahar today in the language today mean month but Shahar never was a month Shahar is a is a is a, is a word mean moon mm. so whoever of you witness here we go chapter 2 verse 185 the word Shahar all right if you read the translation you will see there is something wrong in this translation it says Ramadan is the month. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. It starts with the word shahar. Shahar. You see, this is why I say always be careful when you choose a translation to learn from. So here he said, let us read this one and we will switch to the other one. Ramadan is the month which sent down the Quran as guide to mankind. But this is stupid because the Quran was not sent in a month, was not sent in a 30 days. Ramadan was sent through many 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 years supposedly according to Muhammad and he was receiving every few days a verse During mm -hmm. the whole year. So what Ramadan came down how Ramadan came down? <laughs> well, how does how has no one else pointed this out before this is ridiculous Yeah, then guide to mankind as a clear sign of guidance and judgment between right and wrong so every one of you who present at his home during the month should you spend fasting but this doesn't say that this is a false translation in here it says whoever of you witness the moon which is the shahar if we go let us let us change the translation or translator you see this is why you, you wonder sometime when you just change in the translation how things change look the month of ramadan this guy he come with the meaning of the word you see here there the guy he put the word month between two brackets as if it's not there but the fact it says shahar now here they're translating the word shahar as month because they are ignorant the word shahar is not even arabic word this is an aramaic word used even in hebrew shahar is a word mean month now it was always a word mean moon so whoever of you witnessed the moon of ramadan this is why here it says Ah, look here it says and who is ever of you present what present there is no present he should say whoever of you sight eyesight shahida you have to do eye citation let us change the translator hmm. whoever of you present in this month that's false translation let's change this translator again we go to uh, Mahsin Khan. Let us see. Here we go. Look at this. Finally, we found a correct translation. Read with me how 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 the translation changed. 
Here, this guy, he copied the rest. He said the month of Ramadan. But the fact, as we said, this is not the month. This is the moon. The moon of Ramadan, which is revealed, etc. And then he says, so whoever of you cite the crescent on the first night of Ramadan. Do you see it? Sight. Yeah. So this is not about a month. This is about a moon. Is the moon which is called the moon of Ramadan. Muhammad, he copied that from the Sabia. And he claimed that his God told him that, as you see in the Quran. So whoever of you sight that moon, which is the crescent moon, then you start fasting. And this is what the Sabi and they do. The crescent moon is the moon who is just like, let us say, we start our fasting and then the moon will disappear. And then the moon will appear in different cities. So they move totally the whole population. They make a festival in the other city. And in that festival, they slaughter a lot of animals. You see, the Muslim, they say that they celebrate uh, uh, the Eid al-Adha, and they claim that this is have to do with Abraham, have nothing to do with Ramadan. But the fact the Muslim they celebrate Adha twice, it's not once, because Adha means sacrifice. And you can check right now, you will see that the Muslims sacrifice a lot of animals after the end of Ramadan, not only in the second occasion. So they have two Adha, and this one is same as the other Adha, which means the day of sacrifice. Every time a Muslim he celebrate, he have to sacrifice for the moon god. Muhammad he copy a story from Abraham. He says, "Okay, we will do now the day of sacrifice of supposedly, uh, 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 you know, Abraham." Uh, so Muhammad he copy here the story from the Sabian. Muhammad he copy Ashura from the Arab, and he claimed two from the Jews. And Muhammad he copy the story of Abraham from the Jews. Many religion. In one book and this is why this religion is very confusing where where Muhammad he come with that there is a moon if we sight it then we start fasting and that is the moon of Ramadan and how such a thing can happen We lost uh, the, uh, our friend here. Well, I'm, I'm very happy for you, my friend, that you left Islam and good to have you with us. I think there was a Muslim trying to call. Please call me if you are a Muslim. Feel free to call me. <clears throat> so as you see, Islam is, you know, is a collection of, uh, of, uh, of many religions. And Muhammad, he add in the basket, whatever in his way. He took from the Sabi. And this is why if you go in the Quran, you will see Muhammad saying it clearly that the Sabians will go to heaven, but the Sabians worship stars. They have they have gods. They don't have one God. How the Sabian will go to heaven? Any Muslim can explain to us? How in the world the Sabian, they will go to heaven? Chapter 2, verse number 62. What the Sabian they share with Muhammad? I will tell you what they share. Very simple. Muhammad, he was trying to present himself as universal prophet for all religion. It's like what they call today interfaith. They bring a Jew, a Christian, a Muslim, a Hindu, a Buddha, you know, and they all of them, they start saying hypocrite things about each other, but the fact none of them agree with the other one about anything they believe in. It's a hypocrite meeting. Those who believe in Quran and those who follow Jewish scriptures, the Christians and the Sabian, and any who believe in Allah and the last days and work righteousness shall have their reward. All of those will go to heaven. How? And for those who do not know, the Sabian was a very huge religion. It's not like today, there's a couple of hundreds of thousands around, around the earth. The Sabian faith expanded all the way from Persia all the way to Yemen, all the way to Saudi Arabia. Even the Pharaoh, the Sabian believed he was a Sabian like them. Even the Sabian believed that John the Baptist was a Sabian. 
actually the last book of the Sabian is called John the Baptist and Muhammad he copied from the Sabia a lot of things so in the beginning Muhammad he was trying to call down everybody don't worry I'm not against you be happy I I believe the Christian the Jews the Sabi and all the three major religions he met in his way they will go to heaven there's nothing to worry about but that was temporarily because Muhammad was looking for a group you know if if I now want to join if I want to win I want to be a president in USA God forbid I cannot win the election unless you know a party a big party give me the nominee to to be to be their their guy and in order to get that i have to join the party first so muhammad when he said with the jew he's a jew when he said with the christian he's a christian when he said with the sabian he's a sabian the same as obama obama before the election he said with the atheist he make fun of the bible he said with the muslims he quote the, for them the quran he said with the christians he he hold the bible and speak about the lord and the messiah he go to the jews he wear their hat and he put a letter in the wall of the jews after he won the election, he go back to his origin. He is a Muslim. So he starts screwing the Jews. He start attacking Christianity. He start presenting Ramadan in TV. Every occasion, Ramadan, the, uh, Obama making a presentation for Ramadan. Imagine. I mean, why? And the funny, the liberals, they say to us, Obama is not a Muslim. So why the president of USA, he go to it in TV to explain to us what is Ramadan. And this is when he is a president. Why a president for a country, the majority, the Muslim in it is not even 1%. Not even 1%. Why he go in TV to explain to us the fasting of Ramadan? Thanks God, I am not a Democrat. Thanks God, I'm not stupid. Thanks God. I don't want to join them. The second you say Obama is a Muslim, they say to you, you are Islamophobic. The guy he have a Muslim Brotherhood Council in his White House. He made a mosque in his White House. Muslim, they pray in the White House. He started, I mean, all the, he sent more than $600 million to the terrorists in Syria. In his time, the Islamic State controlled a size of a land bigger than a France. In his time, ISIS is exist as never before. I, there's, there was no ISIS. In his time, the terrorists became states when they used to be in the run before. In his time, the Muslim Brotherhood, they got a lot of weapon in Libya. In his time, the ambassador of America was killed and burned alive. In Libya why because the Muslim they get so upset in Libya for he is a sponsoring the Muslim Brotherhood which he is a party of it or a part of it now we go back to the way of life hey by the way guys why we have only 270 today what happened what happened Okay, let me talk about the versions that will bring more people. No politics? I know, my friend, I talk about politics. If you don't like it, leave. A Christian who don't want to be involved in politics, excuse me, you are being a fool person. Because politics is extremely important to guide people to what, what is right and what's wrong. This is not politics. This is about what is right and wrong. What do you want? You want your son to go and vote Democrat? So they will forbid the Bible? During, during Obama, go and see how many cross they took down from mountains because this is offending the liberals. How come we don't see anyone want to take the cross down in the time of Trump? What do you want? You see, the problem is that liberals, they flourish because the Christians, they've been told that you should not be involved in politics. Who is the one who taught you that? Politics is not our interest if it is not about us. 
if it's not about good and wrong right and wrong isn't it John the Baptist he did give his life challenging a king is that correct guys was John the Baptist involved in politics was he a politician he paid his life he lost his head for he stood against the king who was doing wrong you Christian been taught wrong that you should not be involved to oppose a false government who's trying to discriminate us and trying to eliminate Christianity and bringing Islam into the White House They start taking the Bible from the hotel, taking a cross. A Christian school, have a cross, what's your business? It's a Christian school. It's offensive to have a cross. This is why you see Muslims and liberals, they are together in the bed. Both of them, they share one thing. They share one enemy. We have to take a Christianity down. But that will never happen. That will never happen. What's happening is the opposite. The liberals, they ruled America for 40 years. 40 years. It's amazing the number, 40 years. Hmm? It's like Jesus, he fasted for 40 days. 40 years they try to implement in the in the head of every child that the way of life is to be hippie the way of the life is to be everything wrong and they thought they took over for eternity this is why when trump he won they could not believe it Right? Be careful, my friend. And now we have election in this coming 6th of November. If you don't vote, that's your, you are, you are helping the devil. Literally. You are giving him the chance to control you, to force things on you. You see, the problem is that Christian churches through history, they were led by false priests who they work for government, subdue to the government. And they quote from you the Bible for you from the Bible what is support their idea that you should obey the Bible they will say to you even Jesus said give to Caesar what to Caesar but Jesus was not even speaking of that Jesus was exposing the Jews who are they are holding a currency have the picture of Caesar if you don't want to obey Caesar so why you are holding his money Why you are buying and sitting using the money of Caesar? If you reject Caesar, don't follow Caesar. Hello. Hello, Sipi. Hello, how are you, my friend? I'm good, how are you? Why well, you are good? <laughs> I'm just relaxing and listening to your podcast. All right. So what do you want to say to uh, with us um i have a few things to say and also have a question all right um so um uh i'm from a muslim country and right. um so the thing that you were talking about obama mm. um I, I was still in my country at that time and obama was first selected for a presidency mm. and uh, my friend is my best friend. She was a Muslim. She is a Muslim. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And she was telling me that, did you know that, um, do you know that Obama is a Muslim? And I was surprised. And I was thinking like, why, uh, why would you say that? Because he's a Christian. And I didn't know that, um, I didn't know much about politics, uh, about the United States or anything like that. And uh, she said that um, he is, but he's, he's telling everybody that he's a Christian because otherwise he won't be able to become um, the president. Correct. And uh, <laughs> so I didn't believe her but, uh, back then, but now it's, uh, it's so clear. And I was like, wow. <laughs> That uh, she, um, how do they know that uh, he's uh, he's a Muslim? <laughs> and um, like, as a Muslim, uh, how did how how did she know that he's a Muslim? And he was just elected president that time. You know, the the uh, Obama himself, he said in the in the in the public in- interview, he said when they asked him about, uh, 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 they have a question for him. He said, in my Muslim faith. He said that it's that it's in YouTube, so everybody knows the American knows. He said that, but they claim it was a mistake. Why he would make such a mistake? You know how? Imagine you ask a Christian prince a question, and he say, "In my Hindu faith, <laughs> how how that will happen?" <laughs> but it yeah. was it was a, a, a moment a moment of honesty, and he said what he should not say in natural way. So yeah. in my Muslim faith. What is the chance of you to say such a mistake word for someone he don't believe in Islam? Why he chose that name? Why he chose Islam? Why he didn't say my, my Hindu faith? He didn't say my Jewish faith, my atheist faith. Why why he said my Muslim faith? Yeah. The guy is not I didn't know it. that. Yeah, he didn't hide yeah. it. You know? But you see, w- w- the problem is in the West, uh, it's run in uh, like uh, the media is run by a machine of money and the machine of money is controlled by specific people and this guy he got their approval like George Soros so if George Soros want to make Obama a president Obama will be a president if George Soros decide to make a Christian prince a president I will be a president all of those people they are hired by the businessmen who they are extremely filthy wealthy rich to the point they are controlling many governments you know, George Soros is the one who make presidents around the world. It's not American who vote. Because, yes, we vote, but they are the one who control the media, which means they control the minds and the decision. So they make oh. you do things. You see, if you, if you study, I, I don't know what is your education, but does it happen to you before that you are sitting home, watching TV, and then suddenly... A commercial for food appear in front of you and you felt hungry. Yeah. Okay. This just control your mind. They are controlling your mind to make you go and eat and buy the food they want you to eat. So maybe you think it's you who felt hungry. Maybe you think that it's you who went to the, the, the refrigerator and you decide to grab some food to eat. But the fact they control you without you knowing. The media is extremely, extremely important to, 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 to control the mind of people. Children, they buy food because of commercial, because of the media, because of movies. And an artist, you know, there's a, there's a famous artist. I don't know how many of you guys, I don't know if you can remember the name. Each time you watch something in YouTube, you know, the guy, he come and he's playing a game. What's his name, this actor? He's a very famous actor. But for me, I don't remember names of actors because they are not important for me. But he's a playing a game, okay? Now, yeah. why they are why they are bringing this actor who is a celebr- celebrity to to play this game because they want you to believe that th- if this guy he play it you should be playing it. They paid him a lot of money for this uh, for this uh, commercial. So all everything a human being behavior today is controlled by the media. You vote, you say, you agree, you disagree. It's not your disagreement, it's not your agreement. It's what they say to you in the media. You watch a program, you watch Sean Hattie, Sean Hattie convinced you that Trump is good. You watch CNN, they convince you that Trump is bad. So now you are confused. Now, how you make decision as a naive person who is not really well educated, you know, based on how convincing was the show, not how right they are. I, I will give you an example. Yeah. During the time of, uh, of Obama, Fox News, they keep asking Obama to stand to, to Russia. 
and they make Russia the devil. When when Obama will man will man up and do something to the Russian, what you what do you want Obama to do to the Russian? You what will go and start a third war uh, three? Are you stupid no. or what? But but they want you to, to believe that Obama is a potato. He's weak. He's no one. He cannot stand for the Russian. Now Trump he became a president since then. Fox News never said a word against Russia. Suddenly the Russia yeah. the Russia is a, is a, a, our friend. That because they are hypocrite. The same as CNN. CNN when Obama he signed that six countries cannot enter USA, six Islamic countries. Nobody CNN, nobody BBC, nobody CBC, blah 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 blah. Nobody said a word against Obama, and nobody accused him to be Islamophobic. But when Trump he signed the same order, which is Obama he signed before him, it's it's just expired. He just extended. The CNN and all the other agency news of the liberals who control by Joe Soros attack Trump that he is Islamophobic. It is exact the same order. So now here we notice that the media have nothing to do with the truth. The media yeah. is a business run by the rich ones and they decide who is going to be better for them to be in the office. Yeah. As simple as that. I never... Yeah, I never believed the news anyways, because when I was in my country, the news was like, they also had two separate uh, news channels run by government, and every time one party would be elected, they would say everything positive about that um, that party, and the other one would talk all the negative stuff about that. So I, yeah. I knew that they never say the right um the truth you, um, have, you have to search you have to search for for the truth yourself and you know sometimes the media you don't even need to make a show to fool you they just change the title you know what I mean yeah by changing the title yeah. you change the news like as an example I'm driving my car and I hit a dog okay so now the news yeah. can say uh, an American citizen or a citizen who you know he was driving in the highway etc he hit a dog or they can say an Arab guy, he killed an American dog. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Suddenly, it is an Arab guy who killed an American dog. So then the title can change a lot of the impact. You know? Yeah. So they do not need to play too much in the news. All what they need to do is to change the title because the title is meant to make you believe in advance in something. That this is an Arab guy who killed an American dog. It's not an accident. Yeah. No, no. It's an Arab guy who killed the American dog. But so when they want Osama bin Laden is a terrorist. When they want Osama bin Laden is a friend. When they want <laughs> Khashoggi, this guy Khashoggi, the one is everybody crying about. Yeah. This guy is a terrorist. He was a member of Al Qaeda. He is a friend of Osama bin Laden. He is a friend with the founder of Al Qaeda, and he have picture with them. And he is holding the RBG in his hand. He is an ex-member of the Saudi intelligence. He is a spy. He is a double agent. And he, in, in, in his hand, God knows how many people get killed because of him. And now suddenly he became a journalist. He got his job as a journalist by the Saudi government as a cover-up because he was working with them as an intelligent officer. And now in the media, everybody crying at a journalist. He was killed. But this guy have nothing to do with journalism. Mm -hmm. So... You want to search for the news in your own way. You want to investigate. You take what they say. We are doomed. Everything they say to us. I never heard any politics person. He's saying Islam is evil. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe very few of them, they are brave. And those who they are brave to say so, they will be tortured. The media will torture them. Islamophobic, Islamophobia. But nobody want to tell him why you said that. Let us hear you. Yeah, I just received a message from from Facebook before I start here my broadcast because I said the word stupid Muslims Facebook send me a warning The guy yeah. the guy is saying something stupid I said a stupid Muslim trying to convince us that the Bible believe in a flat earth Just saying a stupid Muslim I receive a warning yeah. a Muslim he is posting a video of beheading of a Christian He never received a warning and the video is all over in, in Facebook yeah the liberals they try to now if you search in Google just another additional thing to show you how they control the media the the Google is on the biggest empire 
of deception is Google the one I'm using right now hmm. if you search about something in Google Google they control the search engine which mean let us say if I type something if I type the good things Trump he did you will find Trump and Melina Trump they they, they are fighting Trump accused of sexual etc Trump I, I just searched that Trump the good things Trump he did I did not search about the bad things yeah but so why the bad yeah. things is coming up first because they control yeah they, 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 they don't want you to see that so yeah the search engine which you use even that one is not a search engine no more it's the filter engine and they put for you in the top what they want yeah uh, another thing um uh, you said about osama bin laden uh when he was um when he was found in pakistan and was killed um a lot of people in my country <laughs> believe that um he uh I don't I don't remember at that time and uh, did they show his uh, dead body in the uh, any news or uh, on no, the no, did not. like media yeah so all all the people in my country is like not even the radicals the moderate Muslims they were um, they were saying that um, no uh, we don't believe that he died um, they still believe that he he was alive uh, what do you well, think? You know, like, it, it's, uh, mostly, was he alive? I, I Is think, he alive? I think, I think mostly he's dead. And you see, uh, Obama, he, uh, they always, all, always those people, they sacrifice uh, a sheep to make themselves look like heroes. So, like now, uh, those who killed Khashoggi in uh, in the Saudi embassy in Turkey, right? So they are sent by the crown prince. They are sent by the king. But now, because they cannot say we are the one who sent them. They will sacrifice 18 people to go. Osama bin Laden was our agent for a long time. USA is the one who trained his army, trained his men, and sponsor him. So he is not needed. And now Trump, sorry, Obama, he needed, he needed to prove himself to be a, a strong man. So it's a great opportunity to kill this man so, so Obama, he can claim, in my time, I am the one who made decision for killing this man. But the fact... This has happened since the time of George Bush. He is the one who ordered to trace this man and to kill him. And it happened that they found him. It's not Obama is running in Pakistan looking for him. It was a long search trying to find him and happen after 10 years of he being hiding. So Obama for him, it's a very important to claim that he killed him. I think they did not show the images of him, him being dead because they don't want to ignite the peaceful Islam religion and the Muslims mm -hmm. will not go crazy for seeing him dead. Because in case you do not mm -hmm. know, when Osama bin Laden, he did attack of 9-11 because Islam is a very peaceful religion. Millions of children at that year being called Osama around the world. It was the most popular name. Usually the name of the Muslim most popular is Muhammad. Yeah. But because of Osama, Millions of his children, they are named Osama. So uh, everything happened for a reason. And I don't think there is a reason for them not to sacrifice Osama, even if he was a man who worked for them. Because it always happened. They use you, and when they are done with you, they burn you. Yeah. So uh, mostly I think he is, he's, he's, uh, mostly I think he is killed. And you are right, they never show any body or etc yeah but i think by time you know maybe maybe in they were like hoping that he's alive they the people in my country they were sad that uh but they were hoping yeah, for sure they, they didn't him. show he's a hero for the muslims why yeah they, yeah, why, yeah. Why, they, why they will not love him uh, you know <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh you know uh, uh the the funny thing about uh, muslims the the idea of a muslim when he present his idea to you present the bend in the location if you ask a pakistani guy who live in america do you like osama he will say no absolutely not if you ask the same guy in pakistan who was going vacation do you like Os osama he would say for sure he's a hero you know yeah so it is taqiyya they practice taqiyya all muslims in the middle east they like osama and you know you can watch the videos in youtube 
how the Muslims celebrate in 9 11 the to, the to the point that all the sweet in the market disappear in Jordan in Syria in Iraq in Iran everywhere in Saudi Arabia everybody buying sweet to celebrate people are buying candies to, to, to throw them in the street on people in the street you can watch the videos in wow. Gaza in Gaza Strip mm -hmm. you know Gaza we are donating for them hundreds of millions of dollars every year and what they do when we have 9-11 happen people and women they were dancing in the industry but if you ask anyone who lived in USA and he is coming from Gaza what do you think about mm -hmm. Osama bin Laden he will say to you Osama bin Laden is an evil man mm -hmm. but in fact Osama bin Laden he did what the Quran says yeah. you know yesterday we were talking about the verse in the Quran where Allah told the Muslims which is the what which, which is the uh, uh, you know the logo of the Muslim Brotherhood it is in their flag the Quran the, the Muslim Brotherhood they, they choose a logo which is contain a verse from the Quran which it says Aiddu in a prepare for them Aiddu mm -hmm. I do what prepare for them your horses and your weapon to terrify mm -hmm. the enemy of Allah this is the logo of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is sponsored by Obama. Nobody loved the Muslim Brotherhood as much as Obama. He have a consultant to, in the White House. It's a big member of the Muslim Brotherhood. And always you will find somebody trying to present to you in different way everything around you. Obama is a great American. Hillary is a wonderful American. And both of them, they love America, and Democrat Party stand for what is right and what is ethic. Where was the ethic of the Democrat when they donated six hundred million dollars to the terrorists in Syria? Where was the ethic of Billy Clinton when he has when I'm not, I'm not talking about his personal life now, having sex in the office, when he killed more than ten thousand Serbian to establish an Islamic state? It's called Al Bosna in the heart of Europe. Where was the ethic of the Democrat when they sponsor every evil regime in the Middle East and all of them they are dictators? Right now they are saying that Trump is protecting the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. But isn't it you Democrat who practice always the protection of the Saudi? Isn't it you Obama who went to the Saudi Arabia and you bowed down like a puppy in the front of their king? Mm -hmm. Isn't it you? At least, at least yeah. Trump he is getting paid for it. You did what exactly? When Obama he went to Saudi Arabia, they refused even to go to the airport to welcome him. They sent him three guys, three guys. One of them is the driver. As if he is no one. As if he is a guy who is coming from, uh, you know, delivering pizza. <laughs> when Trump he went. The king, the crown prince, the whole family, the whole nation is waiting in the airport. He forced them to pay America for protection. In the time of Obama and Democrat, Saudi, they don't need to force them for very simple reason, for they are the one who made them a president. They donated a lot of money, and now it's time to pay us. You see, if I give you money, if I give you money and you know that you own me, you know, then I do not I had I don't have obligation to to make you to like to praise you because you work for me. I, don't, I lost respect to you. You know what I mean? If you yeah. are a president and you accept to get paid by me, I am a foreign person. I yeah. don't have respect for you because already you are a fraud. And this is why Obama and Hillary Clinton, when they go to you to, to Saudi Arabia, they don't respect them. Because they are a fraud. If yeah. you know, they, they say to you that Wika Leak made Hillary Clinton lose the election. Well, what is in Wika Leak is what made her lose the election. It's not Wika Leak, and people don't want to remember that. What we saw in Wika Leak that she was getting a lot of money from foreign Islamic countries, from the King of Morocco, from the Prince of Qatar, from the from Saudi yeah. Arabia. Oh. More than 60 times Hillary Clinton, she went to Saudi Arabia in three years. What she have to do there? And all of it, it's a private visit. 
attending well, attending wedding, wedding they, parties. I thought that they're already uh, rich. Why do they need a lot of money from My friend, heaven? you will never be rich if you don't have honor because those people have no honor. They are always for sale. Billy Clinton, he go to any wedding party. If you send him a check of sixty thousand dollars, he make a speech in the in the wedding party. He praise the bride, he praise the groom, and he say great things about you for five minutes, and he get the check and he go back home. Those people, they have, they are not rich, and they will never be rich. And rich here is not about money, for they are for sale. Yeah. Obama now is the same. They found that Obama, he made hundreds of millions of dollars just from taking selfie. We found that Obama is a charging businessman to take selfie with him millions of dollars just mm -hmm. for selfie, not to go and make a speech in their house. No, just to take a selfie with the businessman who is visiting USA. Yeah, they are fraud. You know, Hillary Clinton and her husband, they work all their life for the government. The wedding of her, her, her daughter cost yeah. more than $3 million. How they can get the money? I mean, how somebody work for government, he can pay for a wedding party, $3 million. From where the money is coming from? President of USA, his salary is no more than 60000 How you can spend such a money and where the money is coming from? Nobody can explain to us. Yeah. If a Trump, he make a wedding for his daughter cost Fifty million dollar, hundred million dollar. The man, he, the guy, he have money from before. He's rich. He's wealthy. But where somebody, yeah. he worked for the government all his life, can afford such a wedding party? Nobody can tell us. But obviously, it is the fraud. And you know, yeah. The funny is that American who was born in this country, like you and me, I, I'm guessing that you are in the state right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you and me, we are not born in this country. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you became an American like me, but yeah. imagine that we who they are supposedly immigrant, we see the clear image more than those who they are born in this country. Yes. And the proof of that, you will see how many people they were crying when Hillary Clinton she lost. This woman, she is a fraud. <laughs> yeah. How dare you? She is the biggest fraud ever. Yeah. This woman, she literally she should be in jail. You see, by law, if you do delete any anything, any property belong to the government, you go to jail. The women, she deleted 90% of her email, 99% actually. To hide what? I mean, why in the world? Imagine you are putting me under investigation and then I delete my email. Obviously, there is something bad in the email. Otherwise, why I want to delete it? Why I want to erase my computer? Why I want to send it to a to professional to erase all the data in my computer unless I am doing something wrong? Isn't it enough to know that she is a fraud? Yeah. Still, they want to vote for her. It doesn't matter. Still, they want to vote for her. Why? Yeah. Because they are ignorant. Because they've been taught that she is a woman. She speaks for our, for us. She is the <laughs> she is the you know I am. They ask women uh, who uh, why you want to vote for Hillary Clinton. She said, because finally we will have a president. She is a woman. At least she was a good woman. No problem. I am not against to have a president. She is a yeah. woman. But at least it was mm -hmm. for us a good person. The same as what happened with Obama. You know, in the time of Clinton, I remember I was driving my car and a, a woman, mm -hmm. she called. She said, I will vote for Hill, uh, for Clinton, Billy Clinton at that time. They asked her why. She said, because he's handsome. He's a good looking, you know. So this is telling you how much naive American are. American, yeah. generally speaking, they are naive people who go by TV show. Opera can control your mind. Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil is teaching you how to protect your marriage and your family, but he himself is divorced. Dr. Phil is the one who <laughs> will tell you how to live your life. Yeah. This is America. Dr. Phil and Oprah and etc. And, uh, and, and funny show where people, they laugh even before the guy, he said a joke. This is America. What what is the name of the guy who they he bring two women and they are fighting over one guy? What is Jerry Springer? Is, what Jerry? Yeah. His name is Jerry. 
I think so. Yeah. Well, anyway, so, Jay probably, so yeah. imagine those who watch such a show and they join such a show, they will vote for who? I mean, what kind of equality? So they don't want you to reach the quality of education. They want you to be a person who eat a hamburger, watch opera, <laughs> and think that she is the philosopher of the world. And in the best scenario, if you upgrade yourself, you watch Dr. Phil. <laughs> in the best scenario, if you upgrade your education, then you watch Hillary Clinton telling you about how to be civil. And how to be civil yeah. is to chase people in the restaurant if they are Republican. And, yeah. now, and now they found that the guy who sent bombs, he is a supporter of a Trump. And now they will make Trump, he is the evil person who is asking his followers to go and attack others, which is not true. Because obviously, this person is just a stupid idiot, have nothing to do with the Trump. I support Trump, and Trump never said to anyone, go and do violence. It is the Democrat who do that. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, my friend, for calling. I appreciate it. By the way, we have a very few ladies who call, and I'm, I'm glad that she called us because usually 99.9999% is men who call, and I don't know why. So I would like to see more ladies speak in their voice. Uh, I and their do mind. have more questions. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm not hanging up on you, but I thought maybe yeah. I thought we are done. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, question. Mm. All right. So um, when I was in my country, um, like when I was really like my my mom was sending us to school uh, for the first time, she told us uh, that there's a warning that don't ever get into any. Um, discussion with Muslims about religion. Don't ever do that because you're going to get in trouble. That was a warning. And I still remember that. But like, I, I really didn't, I try to ignore any kind of topic uh, about religion with them. But um, there were like several times that uh, in several stages of school, uh, there are girls, because it's all girls school. <laughs> so there are girls that come to me and they had this one system that one pattern of like coming to you and uh, telling you like they, they come to me like this like I really like your religion I am really interested to know about your religion uh, how about you tell me and what I'm gonna talk uh, anyways I'm gonna talk about Jesus and the Trinity and uh, that he died for us and he rose and all that and once I start saying that he's the son of God, they just stop me there. And then they will not let me speak. Then they will talk, like, start talking about everything. Uh, that was a trap, actually. Like basically telling me uh, that, uh, taking me to the point so that they can say that Jesus is not a son of God. How can God have a son? And they keep on talking and I keep on listening. And <laughs> that's the thing. They yeah, say they, they don't want really, and then yeah, you know. Uh, first of all, yeah. they knew they, they knew that you have a weakness that you cannot be. You have to be only in the in the stage of defense, but not in the stage yeah. of offense. And that's why yeah. they are asking you the question because now you are weak. You are a Christian. You are a minority. And if you say something wrong, we don't like. We can kill you. You know. Yeah. yeah. This is why they are but, so brave to debate you in Islamic country. But there's no debate in Islamic country. It's one sided conversation. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but the thing is that they always come and with the same pattern that they, they first like act like that they're really genuinely interested. And then uh, then you realize that they're not, that was just a trap to like take you to that point of Trinity and then attack you based on, you know, Trinity, you're attacking Jesus as, and God and Holy Spirit. Um, did that happen to you too? Like, do they, did they approach you to, uh, like that when you were in your country. Yeah, you see, for me the story is different. Uh, you know, because as I said, it's, it's depends where are you, and who are you, and where I where I was and where I live. Uh, I'm not afraid of Muslims, and um, the Muslims have no really control of what, who we are. So if a Muslim he asks me a question, he will get the answer, and the answer will be very painful. But yeah. you cannot. But go, you would you cannot, like you cannot still go. tell them. Yeah, you cannot go. Uh, like you cannot say extreme words. You don't have to say it still. You have to say it like, uh, let us say, in a, in a nicer way. But not like mm -hmm. in Pakistan. Pakistan, I know how evil there it is. 
you know, if a Christian person, he said anything, they might even burn him alive, you know. Uh, so yeah. it depends where are you, you know, you, you have to be careful because this is a very aggressive, violent, violent religion. However, for me, yeah. I never hesitate to say that Muhammad is a false prophet. And I never hesitate to say the truth that this is why I'm a Christian. I remember once a Muslim, he told me, why you don't believe in Muhammad? I said, what do you think? What do you what do you think a reason? Why somebody don't want, when, when you just said, I don't believe in Muhammad, what exactly that said? He said, that's mean you don't believe he is a, telling the truth. I said, you said it, not me. <laughs> you know, I said, yeah. I said to him, you said that, not me, you know? So yeah. you, you have to say it, but in, let us say, in, in a smart way. Why you think until now I did not convert to Islam? He said, because obviously you don't believe he is telling the truth. I said, you said that, not me. Thank you, you just did yeah. the truth, you know? So <laughs> there is many ways to say things mm -hmm. in a smart way. But yeah. when you are a person who has the freedom, like now I live in America, I can speak my mind, thanks to God, and therefore I'm going to say it as it is. Yeah. And one last question uh, is uh, when something happens in America, mainly, uh, say, um, when uh, America attack um, Islamic country in the Middle East somewhere, uh, all the time um, the reaction is the people in my country used to, like, you know, bomb a church or, like, go uh, blow up some places where... There's yeah. a Christian gathering. Yeah, no, Does that happen to the Middle East too? Yeah, this is um, happening. Oh, like, uh, like, an, uh, not where I live, and my, like me, where I'm coming from, but as an example in Egypt or in Jordan, you know. So when you, uh, uh, when something like, uh, as an example, when the Pope he said, uh, Muhammad he brought nothing but evil, you know. Yeah. So what the Muslim did? Did they start attacking churches in Egypt, in Jordan? Or in in a, in an areas where the the Christians are really little minority, so they start throwing yeah. rocks at the churches, burning them, even they kill the Christians. But it's not those who they are there. They did that. It was someone who live in Rome. So yeah. people they need to understand that when you when you say something against Islam, Muslim they try to hurt Christians in the Middle East. So always we are or in the Pakistan or in Bangladesh where they are minority. Yeah, you do it. We pay for it, and I'm not saying. Yeah. By the way, I'm not saying that the Pope should not say that. I encourage him to say that. He's just saying yeah. the truth, and we will not be intimidated by violence. We will not let that happen. So they try yeah. to silence you. The violence here is for a purpose to try to scare you, so you will never say again, "Muhammad is a false prophet." No, I will say that. And go and do your best. Your violence presenting nothing to us except how evil your religion is. Yeah. Improving our point. When the Pope he said Muhammad he brought nothing but evil, and then you start killing people in the street just because they are Christians, will you just to prove his point that Islam is an evil religion? Otherwise, if Islam is a peaceful religion, why you are killing somebody? He did not even say anything he have nothing to do with the pope and you kill him just because he's a christian but yet islam is peace <laughs> yeah obviously islam have nothing to do with peace islam is a very evil religion even a very evil cult yeah. and you know this is my challenge for whoever is a muslim listening you are welcome to call me after this lady she hang up call me and show me one proof prove to me in any way Anyhow, that Islam is a good religion. Yeah. What do you think? Is it a good challenge? Absolutely. Yeah, let us see. Okay. Thank you so much, Sipi, for, for answering my calls. You are welcome. Thank yeah. you for calling, my, my dear sister. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I encourage ladies to call, you know, let people hear your voice and speak your mind. Join us. Be part of what we do. You know, it's good to be a listener, but it's good to be part of doing good. People who don't want to speak their voice or speak their mind, they have no voice. Nobody will hear you. You don't, you don't exist.
share your opinion share your voice a guy he sent me a message in uh, in Skype he said to me the real father of uh, uh, of Obama is not Kenya my friend everybody know the CNN went and interviewed his brother in Kenya and Obama he agreed that his brother is from Kenya so his father is not from Kenya but his brother is in Kenya and he's a Kenyan citizen thank you very much I mean who care even anyway who is his father and how we know even who is his father the father of a man is whoever slept with his mother and that will not make any difference for me what make a difference I judge the person by his fruit by the, not by his father like somebody told you I have a problem with his father <laughs> I mean even the mentality of people are very weird I'm not talking about Obama that he's a bad man because he have a father his name is Hussein we have just a caller who is an ex-muslim and I'm sure his father name may be Muhammad or Ahmed or Hussein what does this have to do with my topic we judge by the fruits not by the name Jesus said from their fruits you shall know them he didn't say from their names you can be a Christian Prince but you might be the devil you can call yourself Jesus but you might be the, the, the enemy of Jesus what the name have to do with anything The fruit of Obama, he sponsored Al Qaeda, he sponsored ISIS, he donated to them, he armed, uh, he armed the, the 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 terrorists in Syria, who burned uh, churches, killed the Christians, ripped the heart of people. You go and watch the videos. The same rebels, they call them rebels. The same ones Obama he donated for them is the same ones who grip the chest of a human being, and they start eating his heart in the front of the camera. That is the truth. Look at ISIS and Al Qaeda during the time of Obama and the time of Trump. Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? Um, I am well. How are you? I'm all right. Here we go. We, we start hearing ladies now. That's good. Go ahead. I am Debbie. All right. My name is Debbie. Um, I'm married. Am I echoing? No, no, you are fine. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. I'm married to a Turkish Muslim. Okay. And I'm Christian. Mm. And I ask him questions about his Muslim faith. And he can't answer my questions. And what I want to know is how can I make him understand he doesn't even know what he's believing? Well, the first of all, do he practice Islam? Is he like, do he go to the mosque? He praying? Oh, no. 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 So he's just no. like born from a Muslim family, but he don't practice yes. anything about Islam. Yes. Yes. He doesn't eat pork and he does Ramadan. Oh, so he is a practicing Islam then. Well, he doesn't eat pork, and he does Ramadan. That's it. Yeah, but nothing is, else. But, yeah, but obviously he he's not out of Islam. He practiced what you know. I mean, if he fasts for thirty days, obviously he believes in Islam. He is not just a Muslim by name. Okay, you know? and so how? Yeah. So I don't know how to say I don't understand. Okay, so I asked him. At one point, why don't you eat pork? Hmm. And he said to me, I don't know. You know more about that shit than I do. Basically, that's what he said. <laughs> I mean, he chose a perfect name. I mean, a perfect word for the for, for description of what you do. But, you know, lady, why you don't let your your husband call me? Is he there? Um, do you like him to no, call me? No, him? he's not here. I left. Oh, okay. I left a year ago. I uh, you are not with him no more no well okay. we're still married but we're not together yeah first of all a christian woman she cannot marry from a muslim this is not a marriage maybe i know the, I... maybe in the paper it's called marriage in the court yes but a christian woman she cannot marry a non-muslim man you know 
this is not a marriage secondly you know why I, I'm not I'm not I don't want to go on your personal life I'm not trying to put you down but why what made you marry a Muslim man I mean because from, I yeah go ahead because I didn't know he was Muslim oh okay didn't you ask him before you get married I mean when we when we reach the point of getting married from somebody we should know everything about him because we don't we want to marry blindly shouldn't you yes no you should you should know I should have done but here's what happens God bless you is what I heard and um I it was you you're gonna think this is super stupid but I met him online okay and I didn't know <clears throat> until the day before I left from the United States to go to Australia where he lives that he was Muslim the mm. day before I left mm. he said I'm Muslim I didn't know that mm. so he like he, he did not tell you on purpose so because he maybe no. he knew he will you will not accept him if he tell you maybe mm. well I don't know and it was you know it's hard we been together 10 years or you know I left last year so nine years hmm. All right. I stayed well uh, you know uh, I don't know what to say but we you know in life we have to make a choice sometime and always I advise women before even men that before you marry a person you have to know everything about this person otherwise you will end with some traps you know ask all the questions you need to know and uh, online meeting somebody online is not really bad because it's just a way to meet but after 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 we we met online we have to know each other very well because right. you know i'm not going to keep you as an email without opening the email and see what is inside i want to see who is this person i will ask all the questions about faith about religion about what you think about bad things and good things and then i can come to a conclusion that if we met you know it's meant to be that we will be together but to make a decision without knowing very simple things about the man you want to marry from, that's not a good thing. Okay, so maybe my whole thing has been that um, I can give somebody else a good advice. Right. This don't don't do this. What I did, right. maybe. See, you guys, you learn in, for the ladies. Learn from this lady who have a, her experience. Which is obviously is not a good experience. Don't do what she did. It's a mistake, you know. Because when I marry from a woman, let us say, not even a Muslim. Let us say I marry a woman. She don't believe in God. She's an atheist. What kind of family I'm going to have? She, oh, everything I believe in, she oppose. So right away from the beginning, we don't have anything to share. What will we share the bed? You do not need to get married to share the bed with somebody because a person who don't believe in believe in God, don't believe anything, he will share the bed with anyone. So sharing the bed, man and women, does not make them wife and husband. Marriage have to be between two believers who believe in the same Lord, and this is why the, 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 the marriage will be called marriage because in Christianity, marriage is blessed by the Lord to be united by Him. It's not by the paper of the government. So when you marry from a person who have nothing to do with you then you are making a big mistake is going to impact your life and then after what you will do to your children if I have a wife she is a Muslim or she is if I can call her a wife uh, or she is an atheist what I will tell I will tell my child there's Jesus she will say to him there's no Jesus I will tell her that he died in the cross the Muslim my Muslim wife she will say no it's a lie he did not you know I just started a confused family I confuse the children's and obviously the one who will take over is the one who have a better way to convince the children's and because the women maybe most of the time she said with her children more than the man maybe the child will be a Muslim or it may be because the women she is she don't know anything about religion and the husband he know more he will make them Muslim in the case of um, um, the, the, the husband is a Muslim so it's very dangerous it's not right it's not healthy to have a mixed what they call it mixed marriage for me this is not a marriage this is just a relationship it's an experience between a man and a woman and then is going to be ended with a big failure all right my my, my uh okay my friend thank yes. you for calling i agree thank you thank, thank you, for, you for listening take care okay bye bye, -bye. you know like i advise i advise people to, to marry first from somebody 
uh, let us say even they have the same culture because culture is a problem too you see I'm a Middle Eastern if you want to marry a Middle Eastern then you are marrying his culture with him not only religion let us say you are a Christian I am a Christian and okay we want to get married well you have to understand what is okay in my culture and what is not okay because later that might be a problem for you. Actually, it's not might be, it is going to be. It's a must. Because you will live together in one house and he will be your husband. So why in the world I wanna go and marry someone from the middle of nowhere, have different culture, different language, different mind, different understanding. I mean, I will, you will be so lucky if he is really perfect. And he will not bother with his culture to force you into things you don't want. You see, the problem is that when, when people, they want to go and get married, they judge a person by the look. Oh, this guy is a handsome. Ah, oh, she like a tall man. He is really, he have nice eyes. He have nice hair. He have, etc. blah, blah, blah. Okay, we marry this guy. But this is not really what will happen later. The first day he will be handsome, the second day he will be handsome, the third day will be handsome, and then after one week he is not handsome no more. He is just a person, you used to his face, you used to his body, nothing new. Then you will start discovering new things about the person. Either they will make you love him or they will make you hate him. Marry a man or a woman for the good things on them, not the good looking they have. Because the good looking, they will might be good for you in the first few months. After that, he will use to it. Even if a person in the standard of people day to day, they say they use the word ugly. I don't like to use that word. But let us say you met someone, he looked ugly. He might be a wonderful person. Million times better than the handsome guy you want to marry from. But sadly, people they are. They make decision based on, you know, appearance. It's like a shopping, you know, people, they go and do shopping. You ask a woman, uh, what do you like to have in, in, your, in your guy? She will say, I like him to be tall. Uh, I, rem I remember there is, a, there is a joke. There's a woman, she lost her husband. Uh, they, were, they went in tourism, you know, and they went to Turkey. And this Arabian woman, she lost her husband in the crowd. So she went with her daughter to the police to report the missing husband. So the policeman, he asked her, describe for us your husband, how he looked like, so we can look for him. She said he is tall, he have a blue eyes, long hair, he have big muscles, wide shoulders. The daughter, she said, mom, mom, he doesn't. this is, doesn't look like my dad. She said, shut up. They might replace him for us. <laughs> it might be a joke, but it's, it's 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 speaking about that women they are looking for a dream, not looking for a real man. And men are the same. Men they are attracted to the look, not to the quality. If you don't look for the quality you will get only the look and the look is useless soon later you will find that the look did not help you in anything it was just a stupid look you did not look for the quality and the quality is about what the person believe the most important quality of a human being is what he believe not what he eat not what he dress not how expensive his shoes Today, the quality that a woman, she is buying a purse made by uh, a brand. This is what they think, the quality. It was not about anymore, about how honorable she is, how decent she is, how trustworthy. It's about how ex expensive her shoes, how expensive her purse. If you are looking for such a thing, you will end with garbage. Always when you want to be involved in marriage, 
the most important thing is try to talk too much with your the person you want to marry from about everything serious don't ask him what music he like like kids like teenage what the music you like oh i like it etc oh, okay i like it too and this is not a conversation you want to know the quality of the person speak about something serious speak speak about something have to do and touch the value of society the value of family speak about what marriage mean for you because maybe for him marriage mean nothing it's just like a contract Maybe he didn't even, even don't understand what marriage. He think it's the same as a girlfriend. This is why divorce is so easy these days because people, they are not getting married. They are just signing a contract to live together so we can get a lower tax. So they marry this year, next year they divorce. And then you start saying, my first husband and my second husband, and my third husband and my fourth husband, my first wife, my second wife, my third wife, my fourth wife. No, I am not a marriage counselor, but I feel sorry for our, our sister here, you know, to have her experience. I remember once I was in Paltok, and I was debating with the Muslim about beating women in Islam. And I finished the debate. I opened my Paltok second day. And I found a long message from a, from a woman, long story, long, long message. She told me that she was going to marry a Muslim. In the day, she joined Pal Talk to, she was bored. She said, she said in her message, she is waiting for the limousine and the limousine is late. She have too much time to, you know, like she don't know what to do. They told her it's going to be late. So she opened Pal Talk and she joined and she saw a room it's called beating women in Islam something like that so she joined and she listened to the Muslim guy who's saying yes we beat them because women they need to be taught how to behave etc so this woman she gets scared from this she is going to marry a Muslim after uh, after half hour so she called the the, the, the husband supposedly who's going to be a husband she told him I need more time to make a decision and she said the second I told him that he started threatening me Saying, do you know how much I spent for this? I will teach you how to behave. I will shoot you. I will, etc. I will, etc. So, listening to a this little chat room changed the life of this woman. She was going to be married to a Muslim man for maybe many years. That the same as this lady. This is why what we do is very important. How you are going to marry from somebody? Believe that women, it's okay to beat them. Do you want him to beat you? How you can marry from somebody believe that he had the right to marry four women which mean if he sleep with second woman and third woman and third woman this is not a cheating for him because he had the right to have four how you want to marry a person he believe his religion teaching that women have half a brain they are stupid how you can do that so you are gambling you are risking your future you are risking you know you, you will not live long so here we go you know you, you stay with this guy for 10 years and then you find yourself you are out with nothing Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Somebody saying uh, CP have a broken heart too. He has what? He want to get married too. Yeah, I want to get married too, but my heart is not broken, my friend. <laughs> Why my heart is broken? You see, uh, I am not married because I want to do things in the right way. I'm not going to just to marry a woman just because she is a beautiful woman. All women at the end of the day, they are women. And all them, all men is the same. But there is a quality you have to look for. But people do, they get married usually because supposedly this is what you should do. When you reach certain age, you should get married. That's not really the reason for marriage. 
If you do it for that reason, you will have a failure. You marry when it is the right time to marry the right person, not because your mom and your parents they keep asking you why you are still single. Not because you are lonely. You see, a person who marry a man or a woman for being lonely, well, you better have a dog. You are not really getting a husband, you are getting just a dog. Or you are looking for a dog because you are lonely. This is not a reason to get married. And obviously, you know, education is playing a big, big reason for the failure of marriage of people because they don't have really the right reason why you want to get married. Why? What is the purpose of your life? Why? Why you are trying to get married? What do you want to do? What is exactly? If a man he marry a woman just because she is pretty, it means he wants just to have sex with her. Well, later he will find a woman she is more pretty, and he will have sex with the other woman because sim simply this is what he wants. He is not marrying her because she is. His love, he loved her body. He don't love her. He loved her beauty. And sooner or later, this woman, she will lose her beauty. All of us, we get old. And women, actually, they lose their beauty faster. So what they do, they marry her today. She is wonderful. She is his dream. Eh, after a few years, she isn't his dream. She gains some weight. He don't like her no more. The same as Muhammad. You remember the story of Muhammad? Muhammad, he married Sauda bin Tudama. Some Sauda bin Tudama get older. Excuse my language. I'm just saying things as it is in the hadith. She became fat and slow. Muhammad, he stopped totally even sleeping with her. And he starts speaking about divorcing her. So Sauda, she gave her day to Aisha to make an agreement, a settlement that don't divorce me, please. I will be homeless. Just I will give my day to Aisha and Aisha, she liked this idea because that will make her have more gifts and more money. We are not Muslims. Muslims, they don't have marriage. They have four sex contract. This is why when a Muslim, he says, I am getting married, I lie. I know I, I like, this is a lie. This is not, this is not true. Where is, where, is, where is the marriage in the marriage? If your religion train you, go and if, two and three and four, doesn't say even the word marriage. The word nukah or nikah does not mean marriage. It means the F word. So when we have a religion says, go and do F2, starting with two and three and four. And if you cannot be, if you cannot afford it, then one. So the last option is one. So having one wife is the bad choice in Islam. It's for the for the for the person who cannot afford. Somebody asking me, why do Muslims look up lock up their children on children in the house when their a child is handicapped? Well, the Muslim they have an idea that handicap is a person who is cursed but Muhammad he you know he copied the statement of Jesus about handicap and he said no this is not a curse you know you remember when when they ask why this person is a blind maybe he you know is he's cursed this is when they sp spoke to Jesus so the reason you know Muslim they do that because simply it's it's a savage behavior they think that a handicap uh, is bringing shame to the family um is is uh, is bringing a bad image to the family so they hide him and they lock him up in his in their house. He don't go out. He don't see anyone. This is why they die fast. But in fact, handicap. You know why? Why handicap will bring a shame to you? I mean, he's a handicap. I mean, what? He don't know even what he's doing. He's just an, a person who have an illness. Maybe let us say he have an illness in his mind, in his brain. But it, the society. This is not really about Islam as much. It is. A society which is having a lot of sick behavior, you know. Uh, let us say bad, bad, uh, bad uh, tradition and bad uh, behavior. A handicap is a poor person who need your help, you know, and not insult, not to jail him. This is why handicap who live in the West they are lucky. You can go, you can take the bus. 
you can you know even the even the roads are designed for them to make it fit for them to go from a road to a road if you go in the Middle East handicap is dead as you said he's locked up in his house for all his life and they, his family maybe they will be praying for his death day and night it's about how to be merciful and how to be uh, a person with God a person who believe in God a person who believe in the true God he should love those who they are handicapped not to to humiliate them and not to jail them and let them up you go to the picnic you take them with you why not you know it's a blessing it's a it's a it's an amazing thing that people they will see that you are taking care of somebody who need a lot of care that's a good thing for you it's like you are adding something heavy to your resume even to God when you present yourself to God one day God will look at you and say look at this guy how he is a very wonderful person he took care of this handicapped person do we have any Muslim want to call us we go back to Islam is a way of life now how many of you is convinced that Islam is a beautiful way of life as the Muslim Abdul he said to us in the article if there is any Muslim is convinced that Islam is a beautiful way of life you remember the article here this Muslim he said that Islam judge you by your intention and here I want to ask a person any Muslim when a Muslim he take an oath how Islam judge the oath anyone knows How Islam judge the oath of a person? It's in front of you. It says by his intention. So can we believe a Muslim taking an oath? We cannot. Because the Quran confirm that Allah, he take you by your intention. So if you take a false oath in Islam, and this is the Quran in front of us, let us go and search for the verse. According to the Quran, if you as a Muslim <clears throat> you took a false oath Allah will not judge you by the false oath Allah will judge you by your intention Do we have any Muslim here before we, 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 we search for the verse? Do we have any Muslim? He disagree with me. Any Muslim would like to call me and tell me that I am not telling the truth. That in Islam, a Muslim is required to tell the truth and he is required to take oath only when he is serious. Any Muslim? Anyone? Look like there is no Muslims. Are willing to call? Let us go to the verse now. Uh, <clears throat> We have an error. Oh, uh, I know why. You see, I installed my new keyboard. So, what does that mean? And this is appear again and again in the Quran. What kind of religion it says and teach you? That Allah will judge you by your intention, and suppose this is the way in the beautiful way of life, including to take a false oath. That if you take a false oath in Islam, Allah will not judge you by your false oath. A Muslim man, his wife, she asked him, 
are you married to another woman the Muslim Abdul will say I swear by Allah I did not marry any additional women how you can believe the oath of a Muslim when the Quran says Allah will not take you accountable for your false oath and the verse in the front of you any Muslim So when a Muslim he says to us in the article, Islam judge you by your intention, that is a bad thing, is not really a good thing. I mean, because the intention of Islam obviously is deceiving. So we have to look first for the word intention, what that word mean. In Islam, if your intention is to lie, Allah will not judge you. He will judge you only if your intention is a truthful. <laughs> this is what the verse is saying. If your oath, if you took an oath and your intention is to tell the truth, then Allah will judge you. But if your intention to tell a lie, Allah will not judge you. A Muslim will say to you, no, 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 it does not mean that. You know, your wife, she asked you as an example, am I beautiful? So you say to her, for sure you are so beautiful. But your wife, and this, by the way, I'm saying to you what Muslim said to me before, I'm not making things up. He said to me, if my if your wife she asked you, Am I beautiful? And she and you say to her, No, you are ugly. That will cause you trouble. So you will say, I, I swear by Allah, you are so beautiful. And this is what it's mean that Allah will take you only by your attention. Islam judge you by your attention. So intention now, what is the intention to light your wife? The intention is. To lie to your wife and to tell her something you don't believe in. So Islam sponsor lies. But the sister, there's a person in the internet. His name is the Christian Print. And Christian Print is a very ugly person, by the way. I have a big star. This person, he said, why the Quran said that you can take false oath? First of all, the Quran is the best book in the world. And I challenge you to find a better yellow paid book better than the Quran. We have all the names of the Prophet. 25 Prophet, but yet nobody knows who they are. Brother Sitter. If you have four wives, and mostly all of you, you have four wives. Unless you are the Prophet Muhammad who have 13 wives. And imagine, the Prophet is standing in front of 13 women and the 13 women, they ask him one question. Do you think we are beautiful? What do you think the Prophet is going to say? Risk his life and say, no, you are ugly? The Prophet, he will say, I swear by Allah, you are so sexy. And that is very legitimate. Thank you very much. This is very what? Very legitimate? I mean, you want to risk your life and tell your 13 wives that you are not good looking? Are you crazy? You take oath by Allah saying, for sure you are so beautiful. You are so sexy. Islam is a very beautiful way of life. You take a false oath to your wife, to your neighbor, to your brother, to your sister, to everybody. As long as you don't mean it, Allah don't count it. It's a beautiful way of life. I mean, how beautiful can it be more than this? Huh? Islam is the best way of life, my friend. You see, actually, in the same website, there's a smart guy there in the same website here. He said this. <clears throat> We are reading what it says here in this website. This person, he called himself a, defi a definite no. Uh, so this is the, the name of his article. His name is David. He said, Islam is a violent uh, totalitarian ideology responsible for much of conflict we see in the world today. An estimated body in the world, 270 million people. They are not including the number of people uh, taken into slavery. 
which is so this is an educated person making his statement about Islam is definitely is not the way of life they can just say which is so this is an educated person hello yes about if you please mute, uh, mute, this mute, person, please. can you mute you too please hello can you mute can you mute you too please mute. do you want me to mute yes because we have an echo all right go ahead my friend hello I hope you did not mute your microphone. I said mute YouTube. All right, CP. All right, now I hear you. Go ahead. No, still you. Um, still your YouTube is working. My mute, uh, uh, exit YouTube uh, or, or mute the speaker in YouTube page. So yes, you I did. Not hear ourselves twice. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, I did. Um, now I just wanted to make a contribution in uh, in, in terms of the deception okay. and the odds. I, I, I remember Surah to Tairim, I, I, I believe it's Surah 66, where Muhammad, um, remember the story of him sleeping with the concubine, the Christian concubine, yeah. uh, Maria Kipia. Yes. When, when Hafsa had gone to visit uh, her dad, Umar bin Atab, mm -hmm. And and then come he come back and finds he finds her, her husband with mm. with the with the concubine with the yeah. slave, yeah. and then yeah. Muhammad had to you know break the heart because he he swore that uh, he will never again sleep with with this lady. Right. Then uh, later on he discovers that it is a conspiracy between uh, between Afsa and Aisha because the the woman could not keep the secret. And therefore, Muhammad had to break that oath, and and they, uh, and because he had to break that oath, so he made it le he legalized it for every Muslim. Now they can break their oaths. Yeah, uh, uh, for sure you are right. Actually, Muhammad, there is always there is a reason for verses in the Quran to come. Muhammad mm -hmm. he made an oath to his wives that he is not going to sleep with the maids, which is servants. They are owned slaves owned by Muhammad and their wives and his wives. Mm -hmm. They came home, they found Muhammad sleeping with this woman. So the women they went crazy and they have a strike against him, they cause him a big problem. So he swear by Allah that he will not sleep with this woman no more. But then Muhammad they get horny again, and this woman is so beautiful. So Muhammad <laughs> he have to make a solution. So he said to him to, to, to them, Look what Allah he gave me. This is a chapter 66, the verse you are talking about, verse number one. Yes. O Prophet, mm -hmm. why hold this door forbidding what Allah has made lawful for you? So Allah made lawful for the Muslims to have sex with their slaves. But in fact, in fact, the Quran, mm -hmm. yes, made it lawful to have sex with the slaves. But those slaves are slaves from war. In, you know, CP, when I was young, um, I, I could ask the Shay about this the first time I came across it, and they told me it was about honey, that that the prophet yeah, went yeah. In, in, the, in the interpretation. They say it's honey, but how how this is can be uh, uh, anybody <laughs> can believe in this because simply, uh, uh, you know, why Muhammad will make uh, himself forbidden from eating honey? They say because of smell, uh, but honey don't make smell. Since when honey make a bad smell? You know? that's true that's true secondly secondly uh, Muhammad he keeps saying to the Muslims drink honey drink honey drink honey and suddenly he forbid the honey it doesn't make sense and why if a if a wife she said to him I don't like you to drink honey why he forbid himself from drinking honey is that mean Muhammad is a is a potato to the point he just to stop eating something just because his wife she don't like it that's mm -hmm. a, that is a joke you know and how Muhammad he give us verses in the Quran about the benefit of honey and yet he forbid honey to himself. Same time, here we have another problem. You see, the Muslim when they would try to to to, to fix it, they make it a blind. Mm -hmm. So if Muhammad he forbid the drinking honey, that's mean Muhammad is a person who fabricate law. Mm -hmm. Because if you are if you if there's any Muslim listening to me, feel free to call. If you are saying that Muhammad he forbid himself in this verse from drinking honey. That's mean he is willing to make false 
forbidden issues and remember the Muslim they follow Muhammad blindly so if Muhammad forbids something the Muslim they will forbid it too hmm. so Muhammad cannot be a trustworthy just because your wife she asked you to do something you forbid it what if you what if his wife she for she asked him to forbid the cheese you know I, I realized this thing was false because when I went to ask a, uh, the second share he told me it was it was about uh, it was about ginger. That I don't know. I don't know whether I'm using the you right know, English. How, how how he will forbid ginger if the ginger <laughs> is a promise in, in the in the heaven? That, that's that, that so so now I became confused. Now I have two shakes. They're giving me different things. And then I read I read. Uh, Another another tafsil uh, Quran tafsil and it was talking about um, Maria Kipia. So so then I said, if Muslims, how how comes the the Shia are not agreeing on just a single verse, uh, Surah sixty six and its interpretation? And, and then I realized it's not just that verse alone. But so many other things they cannot just agree. Yet they are telling us that um, that the Quran came from the Prophet Muhammad, and it is the way it was, you know, in the sixth century. It is the way it is right now. You know the funny. So why the differences? Yeah, the funny they call this interpretation, right? Yes. So after all this interpretation, we became more confused. Where is the interpretation? Which now? What is the reason? Is it his? Is it his him sleeping with the with the slave? Is it him uh, uh, drinking or honey. eating uh, 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 ginger? Is it mm -hmm. is it the honey? I mean, what kind of interpretation lead to confusion? You know. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the last comment I wanted to make was about earlier on. We he talked about the politics, and um, I come from the country where Obama's dad came from. In the village, okay, and I know, I know, like his grandmother and the, 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 his other half brothers, they are practicing Muslims. Yeah, and even when he comes home, he he, he practices. But you know, when he, when he was over here, he, he had to hide that. Well, I don't blame him, by the way. I mean, uh, he's he's a smart American are stupid. Good for him. What we can say? No, yeah, it's not his fault. If 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 the wolf wear a clothes of a sheep and you believe them, it's not the fault of the wolf. It's the fault of uh, the, the the fault of the stupid who believe the wolf. No. Yeah. You know no. here, here uh, uh, when we mentioned the word the zanjabil, you see the this is the chapter here in the front of us, chapter seventy six. Mm -hmm. Actually, here is a very clear, evident that Islam is a is a very stupid religion. Imagine, guys. Guy, guy, his name is Muhammad, telling us that God, his name is Allah. He promised me that in the heaven of Allah, I'm going to have ginger. <laughs> but anyone yeah. knows, but do you know why he promised them ginger? <laughs> do you know why? Yeah, I don't know. Well, this is the favorite drink for the Arab in his time. Wow. It's like, you know, when you go to the, today, it's coffee, like saying pro coffee. So Muhammad... Yeah. Muhammad, he only promised the Arab that you, you, to my heaven, you will have your favorite drink. You will have ginger, zinjabil. Mm. <laughs> so look no. here, it says here, and they will give, will be given a drink of their cup of wine mixed with ginger. <laughs> who is the yeah. one who came with this recipe of wine with ginger? The Arab, yeah, they do that's... that. So Muhammad, he is promising them that you will drink that there. I know you like you like uh, you know you like, like this is what you like so don't worry be happy no. in the heaven yeah. of Allah you will have this and this. Hmm. Sipi, could you read for me Surah Al Baqarah uh, verse two hundred and twenty-five? Al Baqarah. Baqarah, yeah, uh, chapter two, verse two hundred and twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. What is the question? Um. It's about the all thing. I just remembered about the all thing we were talking about. Um, so, if if you compare what Muhammad is saying and what Jesus said in Matthew twelve thirty six that you know that our our yes should be yes and our no should be no. Yeah. Uh, 
and, and we will give account for every word that that we say. Yeah, that's um, why we say Islam is total to, total disagreement with with the teaching yeah, of Christ. So it's if, the opposite. You know, if, we, we have you one, can just make promises that you don't intend to keep, or 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 just you see, even Jesus, he forbid us from taking an oath because oath yeah. is, is for the one who is lying all the time, and now mm -hmm. he want to prove himself that he is in the truth. A person who yeah. tell the truth, either you say he yeah yeah or nay nay, that's it. Mm -hmm. Muhammad mm -hmm. is teaching the opposite. You can use the name of God in vain, in, 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 because this is an insult to God. What kind of God he says to, the, to his followers? You can use my name in a false oath. Obviously, this God cannot be cannot be true God. This is Muhammad. He is, as you said, Muhammad. He made a promise to his wife. He took an oath. He will not do it again. So let us let us go around it and say Allah is all forgiven. Don't worry, because Allah He judge you by your intention. Sipi, thank you, thank you. It was an honor talking to you. Uh, uh, finally, I have a final request. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm one of the the people that I was learning Arabic from you. The the classes you began. All right. Um, so if you can consider going back to that, I really, really appreciate because, you know, I came out of uh, I came out of the mosque, but really. We were not grounded in Islam, and now I realize that as a tool of evangelism, we 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 need the language because every time I talk to my friends, they're like, "Oh, but that's not that's not what it says in the Arabic." That's, so I really want to be able uh, at some point to uh, not just read, but uh, you know, go go a step further in the language. Did you did you finish all my class on like the one online? Did you study you know, all, all of them? I, I I just started your classes and then I realized you reached a place where you stopped or maybe maybe I don't have the links. Well, to... if you go to Arab for Christ, the account there, all the videos are there, you know, recorded. Okay. And okay. actually, those videos, if you watch them, if you practice them, is going to be enough for you to learn how to write, how to read. You know, it's more than mm -hmm. actually. And and if you know how to write, how to read, then yeah, oh, I oh, can I can read. Yeah, and, just and, that. and then the, the the issue is going to be how to. Uh, uh, to memorize as many words as you can like now when I speak to you in English Learning the grammar will not be enough unless I know words, right? So yes, yes, learning words is just about this is a special effort from you memorizing them as simple as that mm -hmm. Teaching mm -hmm. you how to write how to read it's there in the in the account Arab for Christ and you know just follow step by step we start from the alphabet until we arrive to where uh, uh, You you know, it's going to be enough for you to to learn Totally, how to write, how to make a sentence, etc. All right, shukran. For sure, Thank there's you. more, more to follow, but as, okay. as I don't know, if, like for me, I was trying to do my best to teach as many, but this it was disappointing. In the beginning, there mm -hmm. was uh, maybe 19, and then the 19 became 13, and then the 13 became nine, and the nine became five, and the five became mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, simply. Uh, people they don't like things for free. It was better when I did it not for free. Do you believe it or not? When it was for free, nobody came. You know, yeah. When 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 I when I, when, when, when people pay because you know the, the mentality of a human being is like this, like if you pay for this the, the to go to the movie, yeah, you, you don't, take it more. Serious. Yeah, you have a ticket. You don't go. You feel guilty. You feel stupid of yourself, right? Because you paid for it. But if mm -hmm. if the ticket is for free, you don't you don't have a value for it. This is how people think. So they think when I did it for free, eh, it's not important. I mean, you know, this guy is doing it for free anyway. I'm not losing anything. But when but see, somebody pay for it, then he will he will feel that he lost something. Yeah, we, we, we do appreciate your work. Thank you. May the Lord bless you and just continue knowing that there's those of us out here that are learning from you. Thank you, my friend. And if I ever one day I go to Kenya, I will be sure to visit you. Sure, thank I you. I love sir. to visit Africa actually. I never been there all my life. I would like to go. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Thank you, my friend. God bless. Take yeah. care. Bye bye. But there's one thing I don't like about people in Kenya they are so tall. <laughs> in Kenya, for sure, I will look so short. I mean, I saw people from Kenya, they are like eight, nine foot, man. It's like a giraffe. So if I go there, I don't know how tall this gentleman who called me. So maybe he's like a two meter something, two meter 20, two meter 30. I don't know how tall they can be. 
so I would like hello <laughs> uh, anyway uh, it's always wonderful to meet people from around the world and especially the good ones and here we go we just spoke to a brother from Kenya and you, by the way one of the funny thing about Africa that one day the white man went to Africa to teach them about Jesus today there is a huge number of missionaries teaching the white man about Jesus in Europe who they are black you believe it which is really amazing You see how the Lord work one day the white man came to the black man to teach him about Jesus today the black man is coming to the white man and saying to him you foolish man why you stop following Jesus there is a story I told before about a white man and when I say a white man I'm not being about white color I'm talking about European you know he went to Brazil and he asked for a guide to take him to the jungle which is there is no way for him to go he needed somebody local who can take him there and bring him back safe so in the way with this Brazilian native person when they have a break this guy he have a little tiny book in his hand he keep reading from it but in a language he don't understand so the, the, the European man he said to this Brazilian man what is this book I keep reading always when we have a break he said this is the Bible the 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 white man he said to this Brazilian he said what you read the Bible <laughs> we stopped reading those books from long time ago and then they keep going until they arrive to a cave and the Brazilian guy he showed him in the cave a lot of bones of a human so the white man he said to him so what is this he said this is here my tribe they used to eat people we hunt we hunt literally people and we eat them we cook them we eat them he said and now they don't do it no more what happened he said it is because of the book you made fun of so if if not that book which is in my hand today you will be in my dish one day the white man came to Brazil and he was able to present the Messiah to those people today the white man is rejecting the Messiah but those people are bringing the Messiah back to them the same as what happened or what's happening in Africa you see I saw a program in the Jazeera TV and they were crying so hard they are saying 16,000 Muslim leaving Islam a day in Africa alone 16,000 you can search it in, Amazon, in, in YouTube you can find the video actually I am the one who recorded sadly at that time I don't have uh, I don't know how to download videos I mean I, it was like uh, uh, in, in the Al Jazeera website so I just download there is an option to click and download the audio so I download the audio and after that Al Jazeera you took it off it's deleted but thanks to God I was able to download that video that, that audio in the program it's called a Sharia Awal Hayat which means Sharia law and life in this program they were talking about how Africa used to be almost an Islamic continent and how today the Muslims are less than 10% in Africa and they were saying nobody have the right to convert Muslims out of Islam you see the Muslim they have the right to convert you to Islam yes but you have no right to convert Muslims out of Islam yeah you can type right now you can type 16,000 Muslims leaving Islam a day and you will find the video I can do it 16,000 Muslim leaving let us see here we go this is the video it was recorded the audio was was downloaded by me uh, 
and I don't remember really if it is me who did the translation I'm not sure however if there is very easy way to know if it's made the translation made by me or not if there is a lot of errors that's mean I am the one who did the translation <laughs> you know what I mean yeah so the interview was between Sheikh Ahmed Al Qattani and uh, Mahir Abdullah both of them they are Muslims and Al Qattani he is the head of da'wah which means like missionary to Islam to bring people to Islam uh, in Africa so they were talking about how a lot of Muslims are converting to Christianity coming out of Islam and they and they said literally 16 16,000 and 666 people uh, 16,000 uh, a day 666 an hour hello hello Christian Prince how are you hey my friend how are you uh, I'm, this is Abdullah Napo again, I call again. Welcome, my friend. Uh, you know, uh, I would like to share something with you, uh, my testimony a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, I was born Muslim, and uh, uh, I married my wife. She's Muslim also, okay? All right. And uh, when I came to Christ, I never had a Muslim uh, Christian friends or read, read the Bible or anything like that. But... Uh, uh, you know, I had some visions and, and, and dreams about Jesus Christ. And then we spoke literally like you and me talking right now. We spoke numerous times. Okay. Uh, it, it happens when I was 17 and I visited a, a town where my brother was living in. And uh, a, a, an old Christian man asked me to follow him somewhere to visit his friend. I was thinking he was talking about a male friend. So when we got there, uh, it was a church. He said, okay. Uh, he he's the guy who come and clean the church and make sure the church is ready for the people to come in for the service and all that. So he said, "Oh, uh, why you don't kneel down with me and let's pray?" And then you know, uh, after that we go. I said, "No, do your prayers. I'm good. I'm Muslim." You know. He said, "No, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. It's just a prayer. You know. I wanna pray for you." Uh, I was like, "Okay." You know, I never believed in Christianity. I was like, "Okay, these people are just jokers." You know. So uh, I was like, "Just do your thing and let's go." But I, I kneeled down with him, and he, he, he started saying things like, okay, uh, uh, please, uh, God, love him like you love me. Uh, I never forget those prayers he was praying. And uh, I'll tell you, Christian friends, since we left and then I went home. But I, since, since that day, I, something literally changed in me. Like I couldn't, I couldn't forget the moment, never forget the moment. I did my best to forget the moment. I couldn't forget it, and then, I, but I brushed it away. And I went back to my Muslim life and all that stuff. And uh, I, to cut the long story short, when I got to US, I started making money. Now and I was like, okay, uh, I will take my wife to Mecca to to pilgrimage to make my fifth pillar right. Okay, to become a, a full Muslim now. Mm -hmm. I was preparing that when Jesus like again, no, you're not going nowhere. You belong to me, you know, and. I went back to the Quran again, reading and reading. He's just, why do you believe in this? Do you believe in this? Do you believe in this? The more I read, the more I read, the more questions I have. So Jesus Christ all the time point. Do you remember me that time at that moment? I, I remember the church again at the moment exactly the, the old man was making those, those prayers to me. So I, I, one day I, I couldn't even. Take the, those dreams are really hard, you know. It's it's it's, it's like I tell you this question first. If you if I tell you right now, go outside, you see a car, it's a black car, and it's it's a Honda. If you go outside, you see it, and you believe me, right? Mm -hmm. But if I tell you, I talk to I, I talk to someone in a dream, and that's someone telling me this is the best way. It's hard for you to believe it. So I could I couldn't tell anyone, and I was just really living a very difficult moment. I remember the that year I didn't I couldn't even do Ramadan because you know I was really disturbed. I, I, I started praying as I, I was like crazy, but I, I didn't lose my mind. You know I was like a crazy person, but I didn't lose my mind. I, I was like normal, living normally. But one night, I, I had this heavy dream telling me you need to go to church, and it was a Saturday night. And I asked the dream, I asked in the vision uh, what church to go to. He said, just get up and go. I will show you the way. 
I will show you what church to go to. And I end up to this church. And then when I, after I look back and see, I, I passed by more than seven churches to get to that church. You know, and the, 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 the following morning, I had to lie to my wife. I said, I will go to Home Depot, but I was going to church. And I went to church. From that moment, it's like somebody took like a, a heavy load off my head. Everything changed that morning. Mm-hmm. I started to see things differently. And I, I went to church to, so just to see what's going to happen. And I, I sat on the back row of the, of, in, in, in the bed. In, in the case, what they say, I don't like, I leave. But I'm telling you, since the moment I got there, it's like the preacher, the preacher was waiting on me. Everything he was saying like a point at me. I couldn't go nowhere. And what I, I was calling a music, it was not a music. It was like worshiping. It, everything they were saying to me is like I heard before. Everything the preacher was saying is like I heard it before. Beautiful. And then I, will, I, I stayed there. Everybody left. I was, I was just sitting in the back row. And the pastor noticed me and he came to me and said, my friend, how are you? Uh, I told him I was fine. And then uh, he asked me about uh, me. I said, uh, no, 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 I'm just passing by. I'm not really, uh, I'm just, I started to hide everything. But finally, I had to give up and, and told him exactly what I've been living for years. And he like, no, uh, remember the, the, the old man, that was the seed. And then now we just, you know, God don't want to let go. You know, it, it's your moment. And he gave me a Bible. I said, I, and then since then, I never left church. That's just for a, a introduction. And I went to Mexico in a mission camp this year, last June. Wonderful. I gave my testimony to some friends. Three people gave their life to Christ. Our God is a living God. Amen. And then, and then when, when uh, to, to come to the story with my wife, and uh, when I, I told her I was, I'm, I'm not a Muslim anymore, I'm a Christian, she dropped down and crying and all that stuff. She was really very disturbed. And somebody told her that I was demon possessed. So uh, she got a, she got recite Altar Kursi on me when I'm sleeping, when I'm sleeping. Hmm. So uh, I was laying, you know, uh, sleeping deeply, she went on my right hand, uh, recited that, and went to my left and recited it. But the problem is, God showed me everything at night. Everything she was doing, I, cl- I saw the clear everything. And I woke up that morning and asked her, you was on me uh, uh, reciting Atal Kursi on my left hand and my right hand. She said, no, 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 I didn't do it. All right, I said, okay, no problem. And I left, I went to work. She left it three days ago. And the third night, she tried again. She did the same exact thing. And the following morning, exactly, I saw the same dream. She did it. And I, I, I didn't say anything to her at the moment. I went to work. And I called her, I called her two hours later. I said, uh, you know, uh, please tell me. Uh, I just want to know what I'm seeing the dream is true. Did you touch me last night? She hung up. And then she hung up. And 30 minutes later, she showed up at my work. I said, what's going on? I was, I didn't even forget about that. And she said, no, I came to tell you the truth. Even the first time I touched you. Since that day, Christian friends, she never did that again. And then she don't believe other people telling her I'm a, I'm a demon possessed, anything like that. She knows some happening. She just don't, I, I trust God, you know, I trust God to bring all my family to Christianity. I'm the only Christian in my whole family. There's no Christian in my family. There's no Christian whatsoever. And I was, I was worrying about a bunch of things like, uh, because I was the president of my community. I was worrying about uh, my job. I was worrying about my family. I was worrying about my friends. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ got my back. I never lost anything. I didn't lose, lose anything at all because he promised me. I, I, I showed that, I pointed that to you numerous times. I said, you asking me to Christianity. I'm not a Christian. I don't know. I don't, I don't. If I go to Christianity, I will lose my wife, my kids, my family, my everything. He said, you're not losing anything. But if you don't follow me, you lose everything. See, this is, this is our God. This is how it is. So now uh, I, I gave my testimony to, to, to churches and people just fall down crying. And uh, clearly the Holy Spirit was just showing up all the time. You know, I went to two churches. They called me back. I said, no, I got to stick with my church where God sent me to. You know, so it, this, is, this is kind of, this is the thing Muslims need to hear. You know, I, I, never, I never had any Muslim friend. I never had a Bible before. I don't even know what, how, what to, how to dress to go to, to church. I went there with my Muslim clothes. I was like, you know, uh, people were looking at me like I was coming from uh, Planet Mars, you know. 
but uh, God is just like that. Once you pick, once God, you are introduced to God, He will let you let you go. He will He will be patient and patient and patient and patient. You know, and uh, uh, you can put your God to test. You know, when things got harder, when things got really harder, I, I remember because uh, God will always tell you, why you don't pray? Why you don't pray like that? Why you don't pray to me like this? And when I got in this very difficult situation in Africa, and I pray, I said, okay, I pray all my Muslim prayers that I know, and all the all the dua from my mom, my dad, everything, you know, I ask for them to do dua and everything. But the problem is, one night I sat down, I said, my my the, the God, I was introduced to you, Jesus Christ. If you are the true God, if you are truly what the, what my friend believe you believe that you are. Get me out of this situation. When I said that prayer, the following week, a, a rich man came from Central Africa. Between all the people, between all his family, between all the people that he know, I, he didn't even know me. He picked me up. He said, you, what's your name? And I gave him my name. He said, you come with me in Central Africa if you want. And what work for me? And I was like, uh, yes, at the moment. Yeah, I didn't even hesitate because someone tell me this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. That's me, that's him. Follow him. And then I say yes for him. A good man, you know, since that day I never knew poverty. You know, so this is how the God is. It, 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 Jesus Christ is the living God. I, 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 I told my friend, let me tell you what can I say one more thing, please? Okay. I'm taking all your time. Go ahead, no, don't take okay. It. One day I went to see one of my brothers in here in Cincinnati. I went to see him. He was he was so much in pain, Christian friends. He was so much in pain. Like I told him, okay, I used to be a Muslim, now I'm a Christian. Do you know I'm a Christian? He said, yes. Okay, here's the thing. I never prayed like this, but he had a back pain, very, very severe back pain. I said, okay, let me let me touch your back in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not I'm not gonna promise you anything, but you know, just let's try that also. Because you've been in a hospital in and out. He said, No problem, let's do it. And I pray more than less than three seconds when I lay my hand on, on his back. I, I can give his give his, his phone number. You can, you can call him. He's ready to talk to anybody who wants to talk to him. When I lay back my hands on his back, he like he was joking. And then for three days, he could even bend out a tie shoelace. He sat down on his chair, tie shoelace, or lay, lay down on his back. Today, he's healthy like anything else. And he went back to the, he was scheduled for surgery. He went back, the second doctor said, no, there's no more surgery needed. And how you gonna heal? How you gonna heal? I'm not a doctor. I'm, I've, never, I've never been a doctor before. I've never touched anybody before. I'm not God. You know, God obviously did something. And I told him, okay, here's the deal. This is you and me here. You and me, you know what happened, I know what happened. It's up to you to tell what my God have done for you. You know, this is this is what it is. And when I went to Mexico, like I told you, uh, for the mission camp, three people immediately they fought, came forward and gave the love to Christ. And one of the men came to me and said, "My man, you the way you talk to me brought me back to to to, to Christ." I, and I take this one. You know, don't talk to me. You take the you take God who called me to you. You take him, not me. I'm just I'm nothing. I'm I'm just one African guy who came to America to make money. Not to look for God. I was not looking for God. God looked for me. So uh, it's just a free gift, and I'm sharing that's all. Uh, thank you for your time, Christian friends. And I hope you know you, you your listener uh, you know learn something from this. You know, keep in faith. If you are a Christian, just keep keep faith. Stay in, stay in your faith. Pray harder, and then God will show you the way. There's no religion after that. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen to that. Thank you very much for your uh, your. Uh... Uh, your touching story and you know uh, it's very blessing for for us uh, that the Lord always he proved himself and he you know he witnessed to himself you do not need really witnesses uh, here we go he witnessed for you and he even showed you his his power he showed you what he can do uh, you know you remind me when you are talking about what you know what you lose what you what you gain you know in Matthew 16 26 it says the, the Lord he said what you know which is mean what a person he can i mean what what the benefit if you win all the world but you lose yourself that is what the messiah he said you know people they calculate their numbers about losing and winning uh, about money but the messiah he don't count things like this 
he you know you, you might win the world but you will lose yourself and then you go and you live with the devil so I'm so happy for you my friend for your nice beautiful testimony and uh, encourage you to keep your mission and to bring more people especially from Muslims into the truth faith, true faith and I hope that's what we are doing here is going to give you more arms to to speak with Muslims and to show them uh, you know in a peaceful way beautiful way um, why they should leave Islam and why they should accept Jesus. Thank you very much for, for calling. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye, -bye. Bye. You see, this is why I say, you know, like um, one of the beautiful things about uh, being Christians, that Christ, he taught us to love everybody. And now this brother here, just not long time ago, he was a Muslim. And today, look, he is, he is a missionary. If we can say so, based on what he said, bringing people to Christ. And today, look like we are lucky. How many calls we got from ex-Muslims? So it's like uh, an ex-Muslim night. Uh, many people are leaving Islam for a very simple reason. It is the most stupid religion. As I showed you in the, in the Quran, I mean, what kind of God he promised us that in the heaven you will have a fountain of youth. Fountain of youth? I will give you a cup of wine mixed with zanjabil. What? What? Is that the recipe of God? <laughs> How even a human being, you know, can accept that God will do such a thing? Let's see. We go zanjabil. Read this chapter and laugh. Any translation you wish. Yusuf Ali, Shakir, you know, it's not a long chapter. And you will see that this is, cannot be God. Food? Drink? Ginger? Little boys? We will be reclining on our couches this is god talking god is promising me i will go to heaven and i will have a couch this is god talking any muslim is really convinced here that this is god speaking The Almighty God is a promise in me that I will be reclining on my couch. And by the way, he promised me I will have a nice cushion too. And by the way, he promised me that I will be sitting under the shade because Muhammad, his God, looked like he know nothing about Alaska or Norway or places which is very cold. So he think only desert people he is speaking to. So he promised them shade. And then he promised them fruits because those people don't have a fruits. The only fruit they knew is a palm tree date. Cups is made of silver. Made of silver. A cup of wine mixed with zanjabil. A fountain of youth, the same one we saw in the, the movie, The Pirate of the Caribbean, is in the heaven of Allah. It's called the fountain of Selsabil. This is God? <laughs> truly, truly, I'm really convinced that this is, must be God. Hmm? It must be God. I mean, if Allah is not God, how He promised you this? Do we have any Abdul? You see? And they shall be made to drink therein a cup mixture which shall be ginger. In the fact, it's a, it's a wine. Wine mixed with ginger. Ginger? God promised me ginger? 
I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Finally, I will get ginger for free. <laughs> oh Lord. So if you are wondering why why people are leaving Islam, like uh, the, the brother he just called us here, he, he left Islam because he was lucky the Lord he uh, uh, you know appeared to him in his dream as he said. But there's many they are leaving Islam for different reasons. Islam is the most stupid religion. My followers, I will give you a drink of wine mixed with ginger. That's the, this is very disappointing. Look like Allah, he don't know anything about alcohol mixing. Go and take a listen to that, you know, go and visit a bar. So in the heaven of Allah, there is only wine mixed with ginger. That's it. Since when ginger tastes good with wine? Do we have any Muslim to explain to us what's happening? And then Allah, he promised you that you will wear a green garment made by Ahmed Najad in Persia, in Iran. Have you ever heard of God? He promised me that you will wear a green silk. So all, all the Muslims in the world, they will be wearing a green, Mr. Green, for eternity. For eternity, we will wear a green. I remember the clothes in the heaven of Allah will never be ruined and they will never have wrinkles and they will never be washed, which means you will be wearing them for eternity. The same garment for the coming billions of years. And all of us, we will be green. What they call them in those in the, in the cartoon, the green uh, midget? What they call them, guys? The cartoon? I don't know what they call them. In Arabic, we call them Sanafir. Peep? They call them peep? Okay, I'm not sure. But in Arabic, we have a name for those cartoon, which is those. This is how the heaven of Allah look like. <laughs> but here you will see a pen, people making a drawing. It's there is some action in the heaven of Allah. No, there is only two things you do: virgins having sex and eating food. That's it. And you can recline in your couch. And instead of being a blue, you will be all of you wearing a green. I mean, isn't it really amazing? It's so beautiful. <laughs> I'm sure many, many now, they are more attracted into converting to Islam. Finally, we got all the accommodation. You see, the God of Islam is promising you a special accommodation. You will have a couch. You will have a green clothing. It's made from silk. You will wear it for eternity. You will drink from the fountain of youth. So you will be young and you will stay young. It's called the fountain of Salsabil. And Allah will give you a cup of wine mixed with ginger. And then in the top of that, you need to know that the glass that you will drink with is not made from mud. It's made from silver, my friend. Silver, clear silver. What do you want more? And there's little boys who will go around you according to the Muslims and according to, to, the, to their interpretation. And those boys are very, very, very white and good looking according to the standard of Islam. They cannot be black. They have to be white. Everything in Islam, heaven is white. 
only white is allowed to enter Islam heaven if we go in the hadith <clears throat> Look what Muhammad he said from Aisha that the messenger of Allah used to say indeed your feminine plural referring to the wives of the Prophet Muhammad is speaking to the women you see referring to his wife in plural because there are many a fear is from that which concerns me after me and none shall be able to be patient concerning you except the patient ones. He said then, Aisha said, So may Allah give your father a drink from the salsa bill of paradise. If, 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 if. May Allah give your father a drink. Anyone understand anything? Uh, what does that mean? Muhammad is insulting his wives that, you know, I have too much patience with you. See, he hate to have too many women, and he is claiming that he is a good person, having patient with them, but yet he want to have more and more and more. And then he praised the father of Aisha, saying, "May Allah give him a drink of, from a salsabil." Look like not all Muslims will drink from a salsabil. Only if you. <laughs> oh. Boy. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? You remember the story of the fountain of youth and the story of Al Khadr? Anyone, any Muslim remember the story? Who remember it? Any Muslim want to explain to us how you Muslim believe in the fountain of youth? the scene I don't want to search the whole thing let us see where is the story is it in this hadith oh, la, 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 la. Yeah, anyway, here the story here is a very funny story, and Muhammad here is mixing between the legions of other nations and other names like Al Khadr. Al Khadr simply is a name meaning the green, like when you say green, uh, uh, when you say Akhdar, meaning green. So Muhammad he claimed that there is a person his name is Al Khadr, which means the green, and this person he is a prophet of Allah or messenger of Allah who is better than Musa's in the way to be a religious and in the way even to educate prophets. So Musa's, Allah sent Musa's to learn from Al-Khadr wisdom. Al-Khadr was called that name, which means green, because simply this person, he drank from the water of youth. So wherever he sat or sat, the grass will turn green, even if it's dead. Do we have any Muslim have anything to say?
the story actually one of the most funny stories you know people they can read showing you how stupid Islam is I see somebody made a donation thank you very much my friend for the for the support God bless do we have any Muslim would like to call any Muslim want to tell us how the fish came back to life because it touched the fountain of youth Read with me. Joshua bin Nun, which is supposedly the servant of Moses, and Moses put the fish in the basket and they went along with him, the young man, which means Yeshua, until they came to a certain rock. And Moses, okay, sit down, kids, sit down, sit down. This is a very beautiful story. It is coming from the God of Islam and it's full of truth. Please sit down. Bring your uh, cookies. Candies is allowed during the class. So now they come and they sit next to a rock and they bring their fish with them. Okay? So until they reach what? A certain rock. Not any rock. Please take a note. Not any rock, a certain note, certain rock. You see how Islam is very serious religion. Moses he went all the way from Egypt, or let us say at that time maybe he was in Israel, all the way where the two seas mix. According to Islamic interpretation, the two seas mix. Guess which seas? Anyone remember? Which seas? Who remember? Who remember? <clears throat> Nobody remember. I'm so disappointed. What two C's they mix? You guys, you have a very bad memory. You see, I have a bad memory when it's come to remembering names of, like, let us say a store or something, or even artist or etc. I don't really care for those things. That's why I don't put them in my head. No. The sea, the middle, the, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Persian. So imagine the Muslims, they wrote for centuries in their interpretation that the two seas which they mix together is the Mediterranean and the Persian Sea. But there is there is there is a big, big, big countries between those how they mix together. The Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean, they are connected where? Only in Islam. Only. Now, so when Moses and the young boy, they arrive to this area and they sit next to a certain rock and Moses and his companion want to sleep and the fish, and the fish, stirred in the basket and fell into the ocean like what the that fish is dead do you know how the fish came back to life any muslim can tell us how the fish came back to life it's very simple when they stop next to that rock, there is a spring of water. The servant of Moses, he washed his hands. Then he touched the fish. The second he touched the fish, the water touched the fish. And as a result, the fish came back to life. That's a very true story. Actually, I'm trying to find where it says, that the the fountain of uh, the the you know because they 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 found the fountain of youth. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> where is where is the story? Mm. Let me let me search. I think it's different hadith. Hold on. Mm. 
Okay, okay. Where is the fountain of youth? I mean, look at those stories, endless. Oh. All those hadith. Here we go. I found it. I found the fountain of youth. By the way, if any one of you would like to get young again, please contact me. I will give you a little cup of water from the fountain of youth and you will become youth again. However, please don't drink from it. You just touch the water because if you drink, you might turn to be an infant baby, like one day old. Be careful about what you drink and what you ask for. You will become too young. You don't want to go to the di days where you do poo, -poo in your diaper. All right, because if you drink too much of this water, then that will happen. Let us read together, guys. Read with me. <clears throat> so Moses set out along with as as attendant uh, Yusha bin Yanun, but bin Nun, and they carried with them a fish till they reached the rock and rested there. Moses put his head down and slept. The narrator, he said, continue. Somebody other than Amr said, at the rock there was a water spring called Al-Hayat. Al-Hayat in Arabic means the life. So this is the spring of life. It's spring of what? Al-Hayat, which means the spring of life. Learn Arabic. And none came in touch with this water, but became alive. Oof. Oof. Man, that's astonishing. This is, must be a true story. Yeah, by the way, guys, I was dead, but I came back to life many times because I, when I was walking down the street, I found... Uh, a jar and it says the jar from the spring of Al Hayat. Now, many people they saw this jar and did not pick it up because they don't understand what Arabic is about. So, I know Arabic, it's my language, my first language. So, I pick it up, and since then, each time I die, I touch the water and I come back to life. And I'm very young again. I'm very young, you know, why? Because of the water of life. This is the water of youth. This is what make Mr. Green, the prophet Green in Islam, Al Khadr, green because he drank from there. He lived there actually. So this guy, anything he touch, it become a green. And this is a true story. Actually, okay, tomorrow, one day, you guys, you will shake hands with me and you will see how you will turn a green yourself. Just by shaking hands with us, we Arab, we drink always from the water of youth. You see, Jamal Khashoggi was killed by the Saudi. They cut him pieces. I guarantee you that Jamal Khashoggi is going to appear next week alive because they will get him some drink of from this spring. Yeah, it's very scientific. Now here we continue. So nobody touch this water. Touch, not a drink. If you drink it, as I said, you will become like a baby. Just by touching it, you became alive. If you drink it, you will become younger. And the more you drink, the more you will shrink. You will become like an infant. So take take a note, please. Follow, please, the details in the description. Disclaimer. If you drink too much of this water, brother Thitter, a prophet of Khadr, he's a very well-known prophet. And he, by the way, he is not from Pakistan. And not even from Baghdad. Prophet Al-Khadr, he owned his name because simply he drank from the water that's called the fountain of youth. And that's why he's very young. And surprisingly, Prophet Al-Khadr, according to the books of Sunnah, he attended the funeral of Prophet Musa. And he attended the funeral of Prophet Nu. And he attended the funeral of Prophet Adam. And he attended the funeral of a prophet Muhammad. 
I'm telling you, I'm serious. According to them, Al-Khadr, he attended the funeral of Noah, the funeral of Nuh, the, the funeral of, of, uh, of Moses, and he was in the funeral of Muhammad. All those funerals attended by Al-Khadr. Because you don't die. I mean, what you can do? The second you drink from this water, you became alive forever. To make it simple, Al-Khadr means green. In this case, it means evergreen. Ever a grain. Now I know why they say to us Islam is the best way of life. Obviously, because it's the best way of fiction and stupidity. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't doing really Zakir Naik very well. If I do Zakir Naik very well, I would do it in a different way. If you want to hear Zakir Naik, this is how Zakir Naik he talk. I wasn't giving it the effort. Brother Thitta. The Thitta they ask a question. How come in Islam there is no woman see the Prophet? First of all, let me confirm to you in Islam there is no woman see the Prophet. And there is a very logical reason for that. If a woman became a Prophet, they have to lead the congregation. If to lead the congregation, they have to do, to do, and we do, which means they have to bend over. If they bend over, all the Muslims will look at her as, thank you very much. That is Zakir Naik. Why a woman, she can't be a prophet because she have to bend over. If she bend over, the Muslims will be disturbed and they will not pray to Allah, they will pray to her ass. You believe it that a guy who is speaking to like 10,000 people in that place and all of them, they like the answer very much? A woman, she cannot be a prophet because she will bend over and the Muslim will be disturbed looking at her ass. May Allah ask you. The religion of the true God will be disturbed by an ass of a woman leading the prayer. This is why a woman, she cannot be a prophet. This is the explanation of Zakir Naik. You can search it on YouTube. And it's very convincing. Actually, there's a hadith about a guy who was leading the prayer in the front of the Muslims and the Muslims, they were staring at his ass. You remember the hadith? He's a, he's a gay. Anyone remember the hadith? And they came to complain to the caliphate that this guy is seducing them by his ass. And they asked the caliphate, you know, to replace, uh, to replace this guy so he will not be leading them. Let me see. Here we go. This is the hadith. Read it with me. So Zakir Naik is right. If a guy, his ass is seducing Muslims, what will happen if it's a woman? Read carefully with me. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Don't tell me this is weak hadith, Muslims. Honestly, stop playing the game of weak and strong. I went to Uthman bin Affan. Uthman bin Affan is the is is uh, is uh, the one who collected the Quran, supposedly. He's the caliphate. And we said to him, "You are the chief of all Muslims." In general, and you see that has uh, befallen to you. We are led in salat, mean prayer. You see, the Muslim they say to us, salat does not mean prayer, right? You remember when we say the Quran says that Allah and His angels they pray on Muhammad. They say salat does not mean prayer. Do you see? Do you see what it says in the translation? This is a translation. This is the lie. Okay, so we are led in salat, which means a prayer, by a leader of al fitna. Fitna, which means, you know, like, uh, let us say, uh, trouble, you know, he's causing us trouble, you know. What is the trouble? Let us see. I mean, what exactly is happening? Trial and afflictions, etc. We are afraid of being sinful in following him. Like, why? What happened? What this guy is doing? Uthman said, a salat is a prayer. In the in the best of all deeds so when people do good deeds do the same with them and when they do bad deed avoid those bad deeds so then the guy he said as uh, as Zuhair he said in our opinion 
one should not offer salat behind a feminine person unless there's no alternative do you see it so the muslims are complaining that this guy he is a fame man a homo and they are saying they are tempted when he pray in the front of them. this one he says the word fitna question muslims how a man who is a gay praying in front of you you are he is tempting you unless you are a gay too correct if a man is a gay and he bend over in front of you performing the prayer why you are tempted explain to us guys isn't it, this is a, 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 a good question look they are saying they are claiming that this guy is seducing them he's putting them into temptation that's mean all of them they are gays actually if you have my book sex and allah you will see that all the tribe of Quraysh they are homo how many of you have my book did i count for you all the names and by the way there's more names to count but i count only like you know, the most important ones all the family of muhammad are gays homo the whole town is gays hello hello yes mr mr prince how are you doing today i'm fine my friend go ahead excellent uh so i'm not muslim but um i do have a question i've been uh in dialogue with uh, a lot of people from my work who are muslim and i've been watching your show and uh reading the quran and stuff and then showing these things mm. and uh <laughs> it's just you know it's interesting how they like still believe it but anyway i just have a question they keep talking about how islam is just about the oneness of god and i know that's not true but i was wondering if you have any like verses that can like dispute that my friend first of all let us say the muslim believe in one god uh -huh. i mean who care let us say uh, uh, if, if there is gods and they are not one god that will not change anything because uh -huh. either it is true or not let us say there's a religion believe there's one thousand god mm -hmm. and then we find out that there is one thousand god that will not change anything yeah you're right you know what i mean so mm -hmm. let us say you believe that there is only one building exists in las vegas one casino and then we go there and we find that there's ten casinos uh, that yeah, will not yeah, change the right. fact. The fact is a fact. So they can prove to us that Allah, that one God is exist or not. They cannot. No, so no. speaking about having one God is not a big deal. The Egyptian no. believe in one God. The Jews believe in one God. The Christian believe in one God. There's many religions believe in one God. And that will not make the, the, all those gods are the same. So mm -hmm. it's a stupid argument to say we believe in one God. Now, mm -hmm. what kind of God he says to you that in the heaven I will give you a drink mixed with ginger? Here You're we right. go. We have one God, and this God, he promised me, and he teach me even science. He says that man is a created from gushing fluid coming from the back bone of the man and the ribs of the woman. God, who cannot remember which one he created first, the trees, the vegetation, the sun, or mm -hmm. the sun, the trees, the vegetation in different verse. You see, mm -hmm. imagine if I, if you say to me, how you build your house and then I say to you in one page I started with the second floor and uh -huh. then I built the first floor and then I made the basement and then uh -huh. in different verse I say to you I made the basement and then I the first floor and then the second floor so how I can be God is it the yeah. Quran the Quran itself says if this is if this is a book from from God you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. then you will find a lot of contradiction in it yeah you're right so yeah. this book obviously cannot be from god by by the standard of the quran itself yeah you're right you're absolutely right and i was talking to her about so i was seeing that you're going through uthman right now i was wondering if you have time and if someone want to come if you can go over this uh the compilation of the of the of the quran as well so i can show them these verses well, I, so I, I have i made videos about them you can download those videos you can search oh, okay, okay, all okay. those all those calculations are false all uh -huh. of them and uh -huh. i i destroy it in two seconds you know yeah, uh -huh. yeah but it's a it's a it's, it's a joke it's not even true yeah you're right you're you right see? yeah okay i have videos okay. uh, you, you can just search you know uh, maybe somebody can help you from the text in the chat okay to find right. the, the the right videos 
Okay. Uh, and maybe if we do tomorrow another video, I can speak about it. But just remind me to do, you know. Okay. All right. It's I, very okay. simple that uh, you see, because you didn't speak Arabic, they can do mm -hmm. any calculation they want. Mm -hmm. They cannot do it with somebody speak Arabic. They cannot play the game. Yeah, you're right. That's why I'm trying to learn Arabic. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your knowledge. I really appreciate this, Mr. Friends. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. No problem. See, the Quran in the front of us says, why they cannot consider the Quran? Why they are troubling with the Quran? The Muslim, they say to us, in the time of Muhammad, the Arab, they were amused by the Quran. That's false. As you see, the, the Quran says that the Arab, they cannot, they cannot, you know, they cannot find anything good in the Quran. How come they cannot consider the Quran? Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found their in much dispenser. So there's many bad things, many, many contradiction. So the Arab in the time of Muhammad, they did not consider the Quran to be a book of God for a very simple reason, a stupid book. And then here he is making a challenge saying, if this book is not from God, then you will find a lot of contradiction. All the Quran is a contradiction. And I challenge any Muslim to call me right now and to challenge me to find contradictions. Or not what? No, you know what? I would do it even harder. What about a Muslim? He called me and he named for me something specific, anything. And I will find you a contradiction about that specific thing, especially those who speak about creation, science, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Any Muslim want to do it? And you know, the stories which is mentioned by Muhammad and his followers after that is proven to us again that Muhammad is a false prophet. What kind of a prophet he mentioned to us that there is a guy whose name is Al-Khadr and this guy, he been a green because he drank from the fountain of youth and whoever drank this fountain, he became alive again. Is it that is a clear proof that he's a liar? So Muhammad, he have one God, but he have one fountain of youth. Muhammad, he have one God, but he swear by the fig. I swear by the fig and the water, Melun, I do. I mean, isn't it amazing God, he swear by the fig? I'm so disappointed that Allah did not swear by the banana. We worship one God. He swear by the fig. That's serious. I mean, obviously, this is a very serious oath. Allah choose. You see, Allah supposedly is the almighty God who created the whole universe, but yet he swear by the fig. Brother, do you know why Allah swear by the fig? Because the fig is proven to be very healthy. And there is a scientist scientist from Japan, his name, Yama I do lie Yama. They found that if you eat 100 kilograms of fig a day, you will live 100 years. Fig? Why Allah want to swear by the fig? I will tell you why. Those Arab, they love fig and they cannot wait to have it. And because it doesn't grow in their land, it's like a dream. If Muhammad, he heard about the banana, he will say the banana. If he say about ananas, he will say ananas. If, we, if, he, if he heard about the coconut, he will say, I swear by the coconut, I do swear. This is one God, the only one God in the world. He teach us the good manner to beat our wives, to have many wives, to kill people, to kidnap women who they are blonde. He promised us little boys in heaven who will walk around us naked. And we, he promised us a lot of women. Each time we sleep with any of them, she would be conversion. By the way, Muslims, don't you think this is a cheating? I mean, I just slept with the women and you make a virgin again. What the point? Is she really a virgin? 
Hello? Don't you think that this is the most stupid promise? That you promised them versions, but yet they are not versions? Yeah, refurbished. Absolutely, this is the good... Uh, they are refurbished women. Open box. Yet Allah will give them to you back. You sleep with them now. After one second, after you finish with her, you, you just finish with her, and now she is virgin again. The promise of virgin women, who they will stay virgins, that is just to seduce the men, those Arab men. They are, you know, let, let us, uh, I don't know how many of you understand the Middle Eastern culture. In the Middle East, the man, he is proud that he, his wife, she was a virgin, which means she never slept with any man. So he feels different. He feels special. And actually, I agree, women, they should, you know, maintain their, 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 uh, their virginity. But here, it's not really about virginity no more. It's not about the women she is maintaining because, as you see, the women here, she just been having sex already a second ago. So why she is virgin again? Because Muhammad, he understands the nature of the people around him. The man, he is going to feel so good for she is a virgin. He is the first. So the exaggeration in the promises is stupid because you like them to be virgin because you feel good. You are the first. Each time you sleep with them, they are virgin again. How they test their virginity is very simple. You know, uh, you, you put a lot of uh, shampoo in the shower top. And you ask the women to sit down. If there's bubbles come out, it's me. She is not a virgin. <laughs> no. In the Middle East, you see the, the, the women. There's a video. It's uh, made by a woman. She converted to Islam. I spoke about it. You know, Actually, I have the link under maybe a few days ago. I posted it under one of the videos. She spoke about how Muslim women, they are fake. They claim that they are virgins, but the fact they are doing it in the wrong place. You know what I'm talking about. We don't want to say. So, and if a woman, she do that in the correct place, then what they do, either they buy a product, it's called Virgin Again, made in China. So when the husband have sex with them first night, they act as if they are having pain, and then there's a blood will come because it's coming from that product. They insert it there. Or they do a little tiny, short, easy surgery for their private part before the marriage or night before the wedding night so they will be virgin again uh, but anyway i'm really truly convinced that islam is a very very good religion as you see there's no fairy tale stories it's true proven by science and uh, the spring of use is ex exactly what uh, i saw in the caribbean of uh, the, the, the Pirate of the Caribbean. So if you don't believe in that, go watch the Caribbean of the uh, the Pirate of the Caribbean and you will see that this is a true story. About El Mehdi. My friend, all those names are not exist. You see the fictions the Muslims they create. El Mehdi was a real person supposedly who uh, Muslims create a lot of fiction stories about him. He was killed the same as Jamal Khashoggi. The caliphate, he invited him to his palace and he cut him pieces and he dumped him in the sewage. So because he disappeared and nobody knows what happened to him exactly, the Muslims, they start making fiction stories about Al-Mahdi who went to the cave and never came back. But he will come back one day. That is a fiction story. And then they start creating other stories that Al-Mahdi, because he's a special imam who is from the 12th descendant of the prophet, he was born of a woman, her name is Maryam, the same name of the mother of Jesus. And because he is very honorable, he was not born from her vagina, he was born from the side of her leg. And this is true. I know many, many friends, brother, and they are born from the tide of the women. This is the truth. Imagine, I mean, how they create fiction stories and they are, they believe in them. The guy, he is not born from his mother's vagina, he's born from her tide. Because they don't want to, they believe it's an insult to Al Mahdi to say he was born from there. There's no way, no way. 
By the way, my mother, she gave birth to me from underarm, her underarm. <laughs> don't take me there. Don't take me there. This is the most stupid religion. There is no one person the Muslim they believe in have anything to do with him, the person they believe in. Al Mahdi is a normal person. Suppose he descended from the uh, from Muhammad uh, 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 bloodline, but the fact he is not even from Muhammad because Muhammad have no children. None of the daughters of Muhammad are his daughters. Those are step daughters. So what Al Mahdi have to do with him? And then because this guy he killed, he got into the embassy to get a paper like what happened to Hajjakshi in Turkey. They cut him pieces. They made him shish kebab. They dump him in the sewage, and until now they cannot find the body. And the same story for Al Mahdi. I told Al Mahdi, don't go to the Saudi embassy. Don't go there. Al Mahdi insists. This is what happened to you when you go to the embassy of any caliphate. Islam is the best way of life to the point if you go to any Islamic embassy, they will make you shish kebab. And the funny, after they killed the guy, they made someone dress his clothes and they made him leave the embassy to make it and look in the camera that this is him he left and not only that they said that he came back to saudi arabia <laughs> i mean the most stupid government ever what the, the the story fabrication is showing you how they, they have a they don't have they have a very low iq i mean what kind of iq if this is the intelligent of Saudi Arabia, remember when we say intelligent, what does that mean? Why those who work in CIA, uh, you know, they call them intelligent because supposedly those will be the people who have a very high IQ. So if those who have very high IQ in Saudi Arabia, they did this, how is stupid the one who have low IQ? If this is the high IQ of the country, brother, did that. Uh, by the way, I'm thinking to go to the Saudi embassy to get papers to get married, brother. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. Do you think, guys, do you advise me to go there? Should I get it from the Saudi of uh, for, from the embassy of Qatar? I think Qatar is better because they have sharper knives there. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, I don't know what to say, man. Do we have an Abdul? What do you think if a Christian prince, he went to any, the Pakistani embassy, Zakir Naik will do the interview with me about why I want to get a visa to Pakistan. And he will say to me, first of all, the name in the paper you gave me is not a true name. I know exactly your true name. Your true name is the Christian print. So, we are going to arrest you. Because you are fabricating your name and it is a fraud. And we are going to deport you to Pakistan. So, you will not be able to drink from the fountain of youth because each time we kill you, you come back to life. Thank you very much. Yeah, I will not forget to take the umbrella with me when I go to the Pakistani embassy. Pakistani embassy and the ambassador is Zakir Naik. Imagine how fun that is. Do we have any Abdul? Hmm? I don't know where Zakir Naik is from. I don't know. He's from Pakistan, Bangladesh. I'm not sure. India. I think he's from India, maybe. But all of them, they are the same roots anyway, you know? You see, there's nothing. It's called Pakistan. Nothing. It's called Bangladesh. This is what Islam does. Islam, when it goes, destroy countries. This is India. There's nothing. It's called Pakistan. There's nothing. It's called Bangladesh. Just because they are Muslims, they destroy the country, which is one of the biggest countries in the world, India. This is India. This is not. There's no. There's no. There's no right for any country to be exist. It's called Pakistan or Bangladesh.
And actually, Pakistan, they made a mistake when they gave them uh, to make a country. And look now, you know, anytime a war, it might start it between Pakistan and India. And now, because of the help of the West, the Pakistani, they have, the Muslim Pakistani, they have a nuke. So they can nuke India. And I believe the war between Pakistan and India is just a matter of time. It's going to happen. It's, it's a must. Because until now, the Muslims in Pakistan, you see, it's not about a country. It's not about a people. It's about a religion. This religion, they will not have enough of taking and occupying more land. So it doesn't matter what happened. Now they are asking for Kashmir. They, they, they got Pakistan. Now they want to take Kashmir. You give them Kashmir, they will ask for more. And you give them more, they, they ask for more. It doesn't matter what you give them. They will still ask for more. Well, yeah, Indian, they are very smart people, you know, for sure. But it was the Western, thanks to them, who taught the Pakistani how to make nukes. But for sure, you know, Pakistan is no match for India. Already they have a war with them and they lost. But the coming war, it might be a war of destruction. Right? We don't want a war with anyone. We don't want people to die. It doesn't matter if they are Muslims or not. You know, war is bad. But this religion will never bring peace. I never found a place there is Muslims in it and they are not causing trouble. Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. I want to say thank you for all the ones who called us and a special thanks for the ladies who call because usually only males we call. I want to hear more ladies speaking to us and let people hear that, you know, Christian, Christian women, they have their voice. They are not aura. They are not a private part. They can talk. They can speak. The Muslim, they say that Christian women are not allowed to talk in the church and they quote for you a verse from the Bible. That is a big fat lie. That verse is about women who go to the church and sp start speaking about eating and drinking and making food. Things have nothing to do with God. Women in our churches, they are allowed to speak. They are allowed to praise the Lord. And even the Old Testament, speaking of women, who they are amazingly, even they are prophets and they are even judges. And remember, that our Lord himself, our Lord and Savior, he came through a woman. He, he do not have to, he choose to. So women in Christianity is not a second-hand or third-hand citizen. Is not a stupid being. Is not no one. When they ask Jesus about heaven, about the woman, her husband die, and then the brother marry her. Who is going to inherit this woman? This is the mentality of the Jews. They think about her as a property. It's like inheritance. So they want to carry their tradition with them to the heaven, the Messiah, he said. He and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as the angels. What does that mean? That's mean. He and she are equal in the eyes of God. And in the heaven, everyone is equal, is not by gender. So he and she, they will be the same as angels. And here, by the way, we will notice how we use the difference between Christianity and Islam. In heaven, we are going to be the same as angels. We will not be angels, but we will be the same as angels. What, what, what does that mean? That means we will not need a fruit. We will not need meat. We will not need to sleep. We will not need any kind of food or drink. We will be free like angels. So Christianity promising you heaven totally different from Islam. Islam is about sex, food. Even he described for you what is the fruit you will eat. Even the meat you will eat is always going to be bird meat. Meat bird? All eternity bird are eating birds. Not eat, there's no fish. There's no beef. There's no sheep. There's only birds. So in the heaven of Islam is a total contradiction for the heaven of Christianity. In the heaven of Islam, you will become sex addicted person. Instead of having four wives on earth in heaven, on, on earth in Islam, in the heaven you will have 80,000 women to sleep with. It's a duty. 
This is not a reward. In heaven of Christianity, additional proof that the God of Islam and the God of Christianity, they share nothing because if we have the same God, we will have the same heaven. The heaven of Islam is a pimp house. The heaven of Christianity, we will be the same as angels, free of slavery. Human being is a slave of his needs. So the happiness you will have in heaven that you will live eternity and you will be happy in a high level of happiness have nothing to do with food or sex. Muhammad, he speak about the pleasure of the stomach, the pleasure of the penis, for he is down from this earth and his God is the devil. The Messiah, he flipped the tables in the temple just because people are buying and selling. While Muhammad, he never be upset from a man standing and pissing in the middle of the temple of Islam. He pissed literally. And Muhammad, he told his followers, don't stop him, let him finish. In the heaven of Islam, Men and women, they will be having sex 24 hours, seven days a week for eternity. In the earth of Jesus, Jesus refused even people buying and sitting in the square yard out of the temple, not inside the temple. In the presence of God in heaven, people are doing nothing but having sex, eating and having sex. And this is supposedly paradise. The heaven of Jesus present to us who is Jesus and the heaven of Islam present to us what is Islam. Your gift promise me or tell me who are you? The one who come to me and he bring me a porn tape. Obviously, he is a perverted man. The one who came to me and he give me a book. Obviously, this person, he care for education. The gift speak of you. So if you want to judge Islam, look at the gift coming from Jesus and look at the gift coming from what it's called Muhammad or Aka Allah and compare between the two gifts. One is promising you a food for your belly, sex for your penis, and one is promising you to be free from all kind of addiction. Hello? Hello, is this question please? Yes. Are you still online, brother? Yes, we are online. Everybody can hear you. Okay, I was actually listening to your program. I'm calling from India. I'm right. Christian. And uh, I, I know, uh, I hope so. You know that what time it is, it's like five o'clock. <laughs> so I've been watching your program from like, uh, I watched many videos. Uh, just now you were speaking about something like, uh, these Muslims, uh, they, spread, they spread to different countries and then uh, these people start creating trouble. So I was like having this thought myself and I, was, I wanted to ask you that, uh, is it possible that these Arabs already know that their religion is false, but they cannot admit it because now they have made such a huge mess and uh, now if they accept the whole world may uh, make fun of them and also uh, if they even if they accept that uh, this religion is false uh, they are making money out of Hajj many people are traveling to uh, their country for Hajj and many other things so their source of income is stopped well, you know, first of all, in order in order to know who is really a truly believe or not in between the Arab, we need to give them freedom, right? As long as there's no freedom, we cannot judge. Like you know, if you if you uh, if you want to if you wanna know really who is a thief or not, well, let the bank without a guard and let us see. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like if you make announcement right now that the bank door is open and there's no guard and there's no police. Then we will know how many thieves in the city. But 
right now so there's many people they are not stealing not because they are not thieves but because they are afraid they will go to jail right mm -hmm. so in order to know who really believe who's not you need to give them a freedom so right now there's no freedom in the Middle East there's no freedom in Islamic countries. Yeah. so we will not know really how many believers there is but as I know from my experience there's a lot of Muslims they knew already that this is the most stupid religion ever but who dare to say so Yeah, that is true. And this is why also they're making when they leave maybe when, this is a political when, system. Yeah, you know, because a freedom decide if if uh, who I am, you know, freedom, give me freedom. People they do things mm. sometimes because they have no choice to do something else. Like mm. in 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 a, in an Islamic country, you have no choice not to fast a month of Ramadan. But I noticed and I saw yeah. that all the Saudi, like as an example, you know, you, you go in the Philippines in the month of Ramadan, you will find Thousands and thousands of Muslims coming from Saudi Arabia to Philippines. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there they can drink whiskey and they can go with the hookers, and nobody is watching them if they are fasting or not. So they escape the month of Ramadan. Yes. They go to Thailand. They go to Philippines. They are sex tourists. And then you need to ask yourself: yes. if those are, if 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 this country giving them freedom, then they will not come to to those countries to do that. They can do it there. But because they cannot do that there, so they, they 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 save money and they go spend it where they can spend it for their own best way to entertain themselves. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this kind, this is this is like a system. Maybe those people who don't even know their Quran exact properly, even they are stuck. The Muslims are talking about they are stuck in this in this system that. They, they go to different countries like they you know uh, okay if, if your if your land is attacked by someone if you're in trouble why do you run to Christian countries why don't you go to Saudi they're rich countries you can find jobs there why do you run to West why do you run to like now we have this bank Myanmar Bangladesh people they all are running inside India and then they they increase in their number they they breed like rats and then they start demanding we need Sharia law. And what happens when Sharia law comes? The Hindus, the Christians, they they don't have freedom to speak. They won't have freedom to speak against their religion. And slowly their voice will be, you know, suppressed. And then, uh, like what happened to Pakistan? So many Muslims, and they took the land. They took here the Bangladesh. They separated from India. Slow, slowly these people they they will start demanding their own land, divide the country. You know, uh, in in US also they went, and uh, I was watching this David Woods program and uh, Durban. There is a uh, there is a place Durban, and these people have occupied that land, and slowly they have uh, uh, moved uh, other religion people outside, and now only Muslims are there, and now they want they are having Sharia law in, in that state. As how much I read about it, I don't know exactly. Maybe they're not following Sharia law, but these people demand Sharia law. Then, if you don't give, they oh, we are uh, they they start playing, you know, you are uh, you you are Islamophobic, you are this, and once they get they get what they want, and then they start suppressing others' voice. So we should say you are Christian phobic, you are Hindu phobic, you are Buddhist phobic. What are you? Why are you suppressing voices of other religion? Who speak against Muslims or Muhammad? This is like Islamic censorship. So uh, you were talking about this topic, so I thought, like, uh, let right. me ask you about what is actually happening. Well, this uh, is what so this Islam, you know, that's what Islam is. Islam is about forcing the Arab, <laughs> the Arab over non-Arab. You know, it's a religion, and it's an Arab religion. First of all, this is why you see in Pakistan, like. They are Indian originally, but yet the Arabic is taken over to the point even they are using the, the yeah. Arabic letters in their language now. They don't want to use, they don't want to use to the the the, the, the old Hindu language or Indian, you know. So wherever wherever Islam goes, take Arab culture with it and Arab religion with it. This is Arab religion. This is one hundred percent Arab religion. And the first thing you do is to force Arabic and Arabian on, on 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 the country, and this is why, like you know, when uh, 
uh, when the liberals took over Turkey, the first thing the liberals they did, they took all, they did they, they they canceled the Arabic language from the the Ottoman Empire. They used to use Arabic letters, and now they are using Latin, hoping that by doing that they will get rid of the Arab religion, and they will be more close to the European by being secular. Mm -hmm. But then the sure. the influence of the money, the oil of the, uh, the oil money was able to resurrect again the, the the Arabism in Turkey and to bring Islam back with the Arabic and the Arab into Turkey. And this is what the, what the Arab did. Wherever they go, they force Islam with Arabic. Oh, actually, well, not, actually not. I, I saw in the news that in, in, in Bangladesh, as an example, uh, there is a big problem that people, they piss in the wall, in the street. So in order to solve it, in order to solve this problem people they start writing in Arabic on the wall why because Muslims believe that Arabic language is holy it's the language of the Quran so now he cannot piss in your wall so you walk in the street you will find a lot of streets and walls in the street there is Arabic writing on the wall but the purpose is not writing Arabic the purpose is forcing you not to piss in their wall so imagine People, life change, the nature of life change, the, 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 the behavior of a human change just because of Arabic language. This is how much the Arabic language have an impact on those who they are following subdued like slaves into the Arab Islam, the white Arab man who brought a religion for you, have nothing to do with you, you don't even understand, you don't speak the language, and now they force, to, force on you in their names, their language, their culture, and they force to you what you eat, what you don't eat, and then they force to you to pray to God in their language, not yeah. in yours. All right. Well, thank you very much for calling, my friend, and I hope you can call me. Thank you, bless your friends. Take care. Thank you. God bless. Bye. -bye. All right, guys. I think we have enough for today. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. Today we have many callers, which is very good, and I hope we will have more, uh, especially from the ex-Muslims. Where they can share with us their own experience and their their own uh, 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 journey in life. It's a blessing to have them, and I encourage them always to call. Thank you very much, and I will try tomorrow, if I can, to do broadcast, if not, the day after. And then we see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And may the Lord bless you, and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.